and you're out. A win, though, would all but secure them in that large berth, a loss, and the Bearcats will be sweating it out until selection show tomorrow. All right, Chris, we'll be checking in with you throughout the broadcast. And again, Selection Sunday coming up tomorrow. We'll be waiting on that. Hopefully good news for the Southland Conference. We are ready for kickoff here in Conway, Arkansas here this afternoon. The band filing in. We're ready for some football. Central Arkansas, Sam Houston opening kickoff straight ahead. The game of the week on the Southland Conference Television Network brought to you by Mid-South Bank, the official bank of the Southland Conference. It's time to love your bank. By State Farm, visit texas.statefarm.com for your chance to win the ultimate VIP experience. And let State Farm help you get to a better state. And by Justin's, the official championship ring provider of the Southland Conference. Justin's, the ring of champions. At Sam Houston State University, you can turn dreams into reality. I like digital forensics because I want to help stop some of the crimes in society. I think getting a degree will help me in the future because it will give me an advantage of getting a job. If someone was transferring colleges, I would recommend Sam Houston State University because of the atmosphere and the support from the professors. Sam Houston State University. Discover a great name in Texas education. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics, helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. Back live in Conway, Arkansas. Sam Houston State head coach Willie Fritz, fourth season overall. You see the uh, record at this point, 40 and 12. Stits at background and Shea back to back South and Conference titles, back to back trip to the national championship game. This is a big one for his program today. And for Clint Cock, 14th season as head coach here at Central Arkansas. He's done an outstanding job, 104 and 59 record. Yeah, winning his coach in UCA Bear history. Eclipse that feat this year, Randy. And what a great job that he has done here in Conway. Sam Houston State will kick it off to Central Arkansas. And they will bring it out. That's Jatavius Wilson from the four-yard line. Had his little seam up the middle. Gets it out to 30. Ball comes loose there for a moment. Bearcats are saying they might have the football here. We'll see now. Central Arkansas recovered. And they will begin this football game on offense here on a chilly day in Conway. Take a look at the return here by Wilson. This is a young man that's uh, done a fantastic job, just a freshman. No, he certainly has, and he is uh, one of those guys that we will be talking about a lot today for this Bear offense. He's inserted himself with 40 catches on the season. First and 10, they'll begin their series on the 31-yard line right off the bat, Howard will throw the football pass is caught there at the 35 yard line. Take a look at the State Farm starting lineups. That was Clay Murphy with the catch for Central Arkansas. State Farm starting lineups now on offense for Central Arkansas up front. Good group up front there on that offensive line. Dominic Allen, that left tackle. He's been around a while. William Matthews in the backfield. He gets the carry right here for the Bears. Couple of initial contacts. Keeps moving those legs, Shay. Yeah, good job Got there. To the 40 there. You know what, Randy? As you said, he kept moving the legs. He's bouncing off of arm tackles. And he's just at the first down mark. Let's see if they're going to move him forward. If not, it's going to be third and less than half a yard for the first down. Stay Farm starting lineup says we continue with Central Arkansas. Desmond Lewis, their number one receiver. He's got 45 this year for Central Arkansas. And they didn't need much for the first down. They'll get enough there, and the chains will move for UCA. Well, you see Dominique Allen, the 6'3", 295-pound senior, jumping up and down, saying, yes, we got the first down. See you what, you talked about it. It's a little bit of a raw day. It's cold here. Yep. Winter has kind of made its presence known. But I tell you, there's a lot of activity, and there's a lot of excitement on the field. Well, they switched quarterbacks momentarily. We're going to see that today as Taylor Reed, number 15 in 
for Ryan Howard so we could see a rotation uh, throughout the afternoon for Central Arkansas. Just underway here in Conway. Bearcats. Eight and three on the year, four and two in conference play. And for Central Arkansas, they bring a six and five overall record, three and three in the Southland Conference. Second down and three. That's Jatavius Wilson, the freshman. Crosses midfield. Take a look at the State Farm starting lineups. Take a look at that Bearcat defense now. This is a veteran group, Shade. We talked about Andrew Weaver, a couple of bookend defensive ends here. Jared Brown, Siona Latu, Forbes Baggett, they're all playmakers. Tanner Brock, one of the top tacklers on the Bearcat defense. And Eric Fiolo, the linebacker who is also in that mix there, Randy, comes up with the big play for the Bearcat defense, although it is enough for the Bears to pick up the first down. All right, continue State Farm starting lineups. Buki Sneed, he's a lockdown corner for this Bearcat defense. Again, plenty of playmakers. Shelby Davis having himself a good season as well for Sam Houston State. Sam Houston is going to call a timeout here with 12.24 to go in the first. We'll see what that's all about. Talk things over. So UCA first series of this football game. They've marched it down now on the 45 yard line of Sam Houston State. We know Randy after this uh, start here by the by the Bears offense with both Howard and Reed trading snaps. But again, very effective in moving the ball, getting it across field. Defensive coordinator Mike Collins calls a timeout and says, hey, slow this thing down just a little bit. Let's get back. Let's focus on our assignments and make sure we know what we're doing. And again, give credit to that Bear offense for making some plays and doing what they want to do offensively. And I, I really do, again, flipping the coin, if you will, saying, hey, let's take a timeout. Let's regroup. Let's right. gather and let's see what kind of adjustments he can make here in that very short 30 second timeout. Ryan Howard checks back in now for UCA. First and 10 now again from the 45 yard line. Howard dumps it out to Willie Matthews, turns the corner, shakes a tackle inside the 35, and he's knocked down out of bounds close to the 30-yard line. Good pick up there. 15 yards on the pass play from Howard to Willie Matthews. Well, Randy, you're going to see Willie Matthews' speed is just too much. Tanner Brock not in bad position, but Willie Matthews with that little extra burst is able to bounce it outside, run outside of the reach of Brock, who had decent coverage, but did not account for the speed of Matthews, and Matthews makes a big play. Michael Wade had to stop there for Sam Houston State. First and 10 now. Howard, plenty of time. Looking to the end zone. Passes incomplete. Looking down there. Good coverage on the play by uh, Buki Sneed. All conference corner pass intended there for Jatavius Wilson. There's Buki Sneed. And a lot of these quarterbacks, they don't go Sneed's way very often, do they? No, you don't. This guy's got nine career interceptions, Randy, and that really is a. Uh, it's an understatement of how good he plays. You said lockdown corner. He generally gets matched up against the hottest receiver on an offense. It doesn't always have to be the best guy with the biggest numbers, but the hottest one. And Buki Sneed is one of those guys, as you said, lockdown corner. He can shut you down. That was Taylor Reed again checking back in. The rotation continues. Reed's an interesting uh, sophomore player. He's got good size, Shea. He's 6'3", 215 pounds. He's a transfer from Arkansas where he redshirted, but before that, he was at the University of Memphis 2011 where he actually started nine games. So this is a, a kid who's got some experience here. Ryan Howard, though, back in now. Third down play for the Bears. Howard over the middle. He's got his receiver. And that is going to be a touchdown for UCA. Desmond Smith. Takes it in. He got plenty of time to throw that football. He was patient with it, dumped it off, and Smith did the rest. Well, give the offensive line a lot of credit. And then the, and then the poise there by Ryan Howard, Randy, to step up in the pocket and not get happy feet. Locate the receiver, deliver a nice ball. Did a good job there.
One after is up and good. Eddie Kamara with the honors for Central Arkansas. The Bears are on the board. 11-17 to go here, first quarter. Central Arkansas up 7 up. Hey, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified, not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. All right, back live in Conway, Arkansas. Let's explain now. That was number 89, and we were looking down like, who's 89? Well, it's Desmond Lewis, who normally wears number five. Well, he does, but he's wearing number 89 because his best friend on the team is Chase Dixon, the all-world tight end who got hurt i believe in the lamar game randy and look, there's nfl scouts pouring all over conway wanting to learn more about chase dixon tight end is 6'5, 239 pounds remember he had 22 catches and six of those were for touchdowns this cue by sam houston state on the kickoff and central arkansas has recovered a critical early turnover on the return by the Bearcats, and UCA now will take over. Well, They'll now, mark it at the 22-yard line. Well, now you can call out Desmond Smith's name. That was number 88 on special teams who came <laughs> up with the big play for the Bears. It was a short kick. It was Shane Young, it looked like, yeah. trying to field that exactly. it's a, it's a, kickoff. There's and, some, some wind swirling around on that field. Could have been a factor, but it was a short kick. Just took his uh, eye off it just for a moment, and that's all it took. Loose ball, Bears recover, and UCA now. They'll mark it at the 24-yard line. Already up by a touchdown. Desmond Smith. And that's Desmond Smith, and that is another Central Arkansas touchdown. It didn't take long. They take advantage of the turnover, and they find the end zone again. Well, how about the series for Desmond Smith? Not only does he recover the muffed kickoff, giving the offense outstanding starting field position, he comes back on the first offensive play from scrimmage and scores a touchdown. It's the Desmond Smith show. So far it is. Take a look at it again. There's Howard. This is a simple dump off and nobody home for the Bearcats. Touchdown from Alec, UCA. And Alec Willis, number 55, leading him out there. And Alec Willis is another one of those guys that's had to fill in and make some plays for this team. DJ Appy, the starting center, is out. Alec Willis in and did a good job there. All right, there's Desmond Smith celebrating. Again, recovered the fumble and in for the touchdown. 14 0 lead. Right now, let's toss it down to the field. Let's check in now with Chris Mikowski. Chris? And Randy will look back at Thursday night at Strawberry Stadium in Hammond, Louisiana. Nickel State and Southeastern. Colonel QB to Scotty Figaro. A pair of first half TD runs. And Nichols was smelling upset. Up 14 13 at the break. But then SLU takes over. Devontae Scott. A 53-yard TD run to the near side, breaking away. Brian Bennett then, he adds 273 yards and two touchdown passing, plus a rushing TD. And the Lions get that Southland trophy. They win the title outright, 52 
to 27. That gives Southeastern Louisiana an undefeated record in the Southland and an automatic bid in the NCAA FCS playoffs. Well, you know, Randy, as Chris is talking about that explosive second half, we saw that last week when Sam was at Southeastern. At second half, they just came out, did the Lions, and uh, took care of business. Richard Sincere here on a return for the Bearcats, getting well, him near midfield. Now another kick that just floated up there was short, and Sincere brings it out, so the Bearcats uh, hold on to it. They will get good field position. Again, that turnover on that last kickoff leading to a second touchdown, and Central Arkansas, in a matter of just a few minutes, have come out strong here, leading 14-0 at home. Where they, by the way, are 36 and 8 here in Conway over the last seven years. 14 and 2 here on the stripe. So Brian Bell will not uh, play today at quarterback. Could see him potentially an emergency situation, but Jared Johnson, who came in a week ago at Southeastern, uh, Shea, you and I saw him down there. He came in and provided a little spark, and he's a young quarterback that they're very high on. Well, and for good reason, too. Brian Bell, as you talked about, and we will continue to talk about a four-year starter for this Bearcat team. And when you lead a team to back-to-back -back national championship appearances, you're oh, doing yeah. a lot of good. And one of the most decorated quarterbacks in Sam Houston State history, not available today. But as we, as you said, we saw Jared Johnson, and he he looked comfortable last week against Southeastern. And you can figure with the week of practice, he's probably going to have a little bit more confidence. Yeah, he had all the reps with the uh, number ones and. You see Brian Bell on the sidelines. We'll get a shot of him momentarily because he's a coach's kid, so he's going to be a coach today here on the sidelines for Sam Houston State. State Farm starting lineups for the Bearcats. Important up front for this offensive line to give Johnson time, open some holes for Timothy Flanders. They got a good group there and a good receiving core as well. Chance Nelson, Sincere, Torrance Williams, the top receiver on this Bearcat team. There's Flanders right on left side. Nothing going there. Well, Randy, they needed about a yard. Flanders tries to bounce it out wide, runs right into Jonathan Woodard. Didn't get it, though. One of the leading tacklers on the team. He's got 11 tackle for losses on the season. He picks up another one on Flanders, and it looks like right now Coach Willie Fritz and the Bearcats going to go for it. Let's see if Jared Johnson drops back or how far he goes back. Flanders there in that pistol look. They're going for it. They'll hand it to Flanders. He's got enough for the first down. Well, he, just enough. Yeah. <laughs> got tripped up there near where that first down marker was and lunged forward for an extra yard. So a first down for the Bearcats. State Farm starting lineups now defensively for Central Arkansas. Up front, keep an eye on Matt Hornbuckle. He's a playmaker. Marquise Gaines, he's been around in this program as well. Justin Hurd in the middle, Blake Childers, Zach Bush, good linebacking core, and a secondary as well. Justin Love has been around for Coach Cock here in Conway. Here's Johnson looking for his receiver around the 35-yard line. Pass intended there for number 82. That's Stephen Williams. So incomplete. And a second down coming up now for the Bearcats. So Johnson came in late last week. You know, when Bell went down, we had we saw Don King and we saw Jared Johnson come in off the bench. I mean, these are freshmen that are still learning the ropes in a tough environment a week ago. Well, you have to grow up in a hurry when you play on the championship team, and that's what the expectations are for the Bearcats. And Johnson with a great run, finally dragged down by Justin Herb, but not until he picks up a lot of yards and well into the Bears territory. Well, Johnson, a, you know, freshman from South Grand Prairie High School, Grand Prairie, Texas, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 6'1", 215-pounder, but right now they'll go to the Wildcat formation. Richard Sincere, they've been doing this for a few years since he's been around and can be dangerous out of this form formation here. Stephen Williams in motion, Sincere. Good pursuit. He is dragged down at the 30-yard line. That's going to be about a loss of four yeah. yards. Good Marquee effort there Gaines. by Gaines. Yep, you bet. Hey, you know, and Randy, you think about this. Richard Sincere, he is such a run threat. But these teams in the conference now, they've had a chance to see him for a couple of years. In 2012, he rushed for 607 yards. 2011, 
979 yards. Yep. Those are the two years when they went to the national championship game. This year, 282 yards on the ground. I mean, defenses are finding and figuring out a way to bottle up Sincere. And off there goes to Keyshawn Hill. He checked in for Flanders. Hill, a junior, very high on Keyshawn Hill. With, of course, Tim Flanders being a senior. Keyshawn will be the primary back next season. He's a junior from the Houston area. Well, this Bears defense stiffening when they need to after that big run by Jared Johnson to get it down from the 26 yard line. They've lost five yards and then now they've had to pick up any on second down. So third and about 14, 15 yards. Yeah, they need to reach the 16 yard line. Pass is caught there. That's Torrance Williams. Not enough for the first down. It's close to the 20-yard line. He's still going to be about four yards short. And I like the play by offensive coordinator, the play call by offensive coordinator Doug Ruse in his second year. You got a young quarterback. You have third and 14 yards. You place the ball to one of your most reliable receivers, and you know you're not going to pick up the first down, but you put it right in the middle of the field, and you give yourself an opportunity to get some points on the board here. Loops from Barriga with the field goal attempt. Mark it at the 26, so 36-yard field goal. Snap a little high, but Brian Bell controlled it. It's up and good. So Brian Bell, not the quarterback, but he's out there to hold. And he's been in that position. So Bearcats on the board with the field goal. Still some work to do. They trail Central Arkansas 14 to 3. First quarter here at Conway. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, every down, every day. Back here live at Conway, Arkansas, 6.49 to go here. First quarter, good start for the Bears, leading 14-3. to Bearcats kicking it off. You know, they tried. They attempted the kick. Yep. They actually did, but as soon as the ball and foot met, or foot and ball met, officials blew the whistle. And Randy, we've talked about the weather conditions here in Conway, and it is, as I said, a little chilly, but, and there is a little wind blowing, a little swirling at times, but right now seemingly predominantly behind Sam Houston State. So this Bears offense going into the wind a little bit in that short passing game. Yeah. Brian Howard, Taylor Reed did a good job of executing that in that first couple of drives. Back to receive for Central Arkansas, number 14, Jatavius Wilson, and number 23, Dylan Winfrey and Luke Swimberga will tee it up there at the 35-yard line. And we'll try it again. Swimberga's kick. That'll go through the end zone. Winfrey takes a look at it, so the Bears will come back out on offense. So far, so good. They get advantage of that turnover and good opening drive as well with two early touchdowns. 
Again, they protect this home field well over the years for Clint Cock and his program. And this being senior day for a lot of these guys that have been a played a major role in the success of this program last few years, or they want to go out on top as well today. Here's Coach Cock. Been around 14 years here at Central Arkansas. And he's, he's told us before, loves the support of the administration and all that he's received. Pass is caught there by Desmond Smith, Redsford freshman, and good pick up there from Ryan Howard. So many weapons in this receiver. Yeah, I, I was going to say the receivers have always been good here. And you think about Nathan Brown, who had such a great career here at Central Arkansas, and he is on the coaching staff. But the offensive mindset, you know, they want to be able to run the ball. And you see there Willie Matthews doing a good job hitting up in the middle. But they always have talented receivers. Remember Brett Soft, he played here a couple of years right. ago. And he was there with Nathan. Quarterback Nathan Dick, and I mean that was a, a big combination. A great true inside receiver. They just, you said it right. They have talent in this wide receiver position, and it just seemingly continues to come up. And you got guys like Jatavius Wilson, only a freshman, making his presence felt. Second down at six now for Central Arkansas. Justin Burdett in motion for the Bears. Howard decides to dump it off to Willie Matthews. Is that Taylor Reed, I should say? Taylor Reed back in there for Central Arkansas. Willie Matthews, a junior. Pretty good numbers. On the ground, 500 for the year. You can see Ryan Howard was going to run, and Willie Matthews is off to his left, saying, hey, hey, give me the ball. He threw it out there, and Willie Matthews did a good job of picking up positive yards, run after catch. Ryan, excuse me, Taylor Reed now back in the game on that rotation of quarterbacks. A couple of southpaws here. Yeah, for looked like Bears. a design run there, but lost a couple of yards. He lost his footing a little bit. You see Coach Cox saying, mm -mm, you got to do better than that, man. <laughs> Second down and 12. Now they'll mark it at the 47-yard line. There's Howard again looking downfield. Nothing there. He'll dump it off. Actually, caught. pass is going to be caught instead. Oh, he's going to give up on that play. Instead, he finds his receiver. That's Desmond Smith again, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, came Randy. in with 40 catches on the season. He's got, what, two or three already early he, today? You won't find it. Uh, this is what a great catch. I mean, the ball is thrown by Howard, and he's really just throwing it over the top. And look at getting the one foot down, which is what you need. That is outstanding concentration and managing the sideline there. Smith uses that 6-1 frame. Reed back in there, needed a yard. He got it, found a seam on that right side. Immediately saw that, kind of tucked it and ran. Chains will move for the Bears. Up 14-3. Everybody bundled up here in Conway, Arkansas. And we have a Bruce DeBear sighting the here. Bruce the DeBear box. sighting is... I think he's getting a little cold. Oh, he's going to hold his that outfit. Head. He's probably fine. Yeah, what's he doing? He saw this heater up here that you wanted up here in the press box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's choice. I love it. Yeah, Willie Sorry, Matthews. Man, we got to keep you warm up here. Yeah, right? well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad you recommended that. <laughs> All right, let's get in with uh, Chris Mikowski. Chris. Randy, you talked about the number change. Desmond Lewis decided to pay tribute to his friend and teammate. Chase Dixon wearing number 89, but the thing about it was it was a well-kept secret in that locker room. The players didn't reveal that he'd be wearing that number until the team ran out on the field today. Dixon, by the way, is spending today in the radio booth. He's a guest analyst for the UCA Network. Well, he's getting some good experience there. Yeah. He knows it. Who better knows the team than the guy who was on the team before he got hurt? How about that? No doubt about it. Good job there, Bruce DeBear, as you said. Another sighting. Came up, said hello to us. Yeah. And actually, he said hello to our side. He, not, he didn't, I think he waved to you, did he? He said hello to you and Abigail, yeah. and not, not to me. Yeah, we, right. we, we waved at him, but he didn't He didn't acknowledge you. And the hits <laughs> keep on coming. <laughs> All right, for the 29th, third down at two. Howard looking oh, Bookie Sneed's way. Bookie Sneed, no way. That yeah, was a uh, Courtney Whitehead, the intended receiver, but Snead right there to cover it up. I mean, that is just textbook coverage by Snead, and, and I, 
the, you know, I don't question the moxie of Ryan Howard going at Snead. You got to you got to throw over there sometime. But he had outstanding coverage on the wide receiver, and that was an easy deflection for Snead. Fourth down at two. They're going to go for it here from the 29-yard line. Now we're looking to throw. He's got a receiver downfield. Another touchdown Desmond for Lewis. Central Arkansas. How about Desmond Lewis again? You're trying to call him Chase Dixon. I know yeah, what you're doing. To get these numbers, but Desmond, Desmond Lewis is Desmond just Lewis. wide open there. How about the play calling on fourth and two? Man, that's gutsy. Take a look at it here. Lewis beat the coverage there. A little late by Tyrell Stokes and the Bear strike. Once again, third touchdown of this opening quarter. Point after coming up from Eddie Camara. It is up and it is good. Quick strikes for Central Arkansas. Bears go up 21 to 3 over Sam Houston State. Late first quarter here at Conway. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better banking side. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. Okay, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that can save you hundreds. Back live at Conway, Arkansas. Everybody's got the winter gear out. This is a cold day, windy day here in Arkansas. Conway, uh, about a half hour from Little Rock. Nice trip up today. Take a look at the uh, conference standings now, the Southland Conference, uh, Shea. Of course, Southeastern, they have been the story in this conference, one of the great stories across the country. What a season they have had. They've wrapped up the championship. McNeese, Sam Houston State. This is a big one for the Bearcats again as they look to hopefully a postseason play if they get a win there today. Well, right now they're going to have to dig themselves out of a hole because this Central Arkansas team Randy has started out on fire. Three touchdowns in the first quarter. Camara short kick that'll be brought out by the Bearcats. Richard Sid Sears got a little, little room crosses the 40 near the 45. So again, good field position for the Bearcats trying to take advantage. Randy, you see that kick by Kamara hanging and being fielded around the 23-24 yard line, and that's because it is going directly into the teeth of that wind. And we saw earlier Shane Young not able to field the ball cleanly, and that gave the Bears great field position and their opportunity for their second score. But that particular play, again, you see those kicks, they start off high, it's just like hitting the, hitting right. the lob shot, and you're hitting it straight into the wind, and coming right back in your face kind of just holds the ball and hangs there for a little while. Bearcats begin on the 44 yard line. Johnson hands off to Flanders. We've got a flag down right about at the line of scrimmage. They're going to call Zach Stevens starting center for a chop block. Coach Willie Fritz not happy with his start here this afternoon. 
Watching his Bearcats trail 21 to three. There's a shot of Zachary Stevens, sophomore center for the Bearcats. And this will get pushed back to the 29 yard line. So first down and 25 now for Sam Houston State. Johnson will keep it. Pitches out to Williams. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds close to the 35. Just shy of that. Stepped out of bounds, maybe close to the 34 yard line. Picks up five yards. So second down and around 20 now for Sam Houston. Well, you know, Randy, and that's one of the things that makes it difficult on a young quarterback getting your first significant amount of playing time. And then you get that chop block penalty. So you go from first and 10 with great starting field position. All of a sudden, now you're first and 25. And and it just just mounts that there it continues to pile on if you will with the challenge is for Jared Johnson. Johnson picks up a couple on that keeper crosses to the 37 yard line. The third and long now for Sam Houston State trying to get something going offensively here. Already an early turnover if you're just joining us at Central Arkansas turned into one of their three touchdowns on the day so far here in this opening quarter. Pressure coming on Johnson. Nearly came down, gets out of trouble right there. Has a little bit of running room, and he's going to be pulled down just shy of the 40 yard line. Well short of the first down. Tackle made there. Dylan Winfrey. Making the stop for the Bears. Yeah, well, Marquise Gaines is going to be the guy who crashes the party in the back of the Bearcats offense as he fights through the blocker and almost brings Jerry Johnson down in a, for a sack. But he ends up pushing him and making sure that he bounces him outside. But he did just Marquise Gaines, six foot, 265 pounds, blew that play up for the Bear defense. There's a look at Jatavius Wilson. He's had a return already this season. He's dangerous back there. He'll field it around the 16, but good special teams coverage by Sam Houston State. Uh, Loses a few yards. Yeah, Wade makes the stop and brings down Wilson. Had it at the 16, and he goes down at the 12, so a loss of four after you made that catch. But Bearcats defense looking to make a stop now. They have not been able to do that so far here this afternoon. That's good special teams play there by Michael Wade, your starting safety to come down and make an open field tackle on Jatavius Wilson. Now it's going to be up to that Bearcat defense, Randy. Can they slow down? Can they stop this Bear offense? Well, Howard's had plenty of time to throw the football. Success doing that as well. There's Desmond Smith, intended receiver around the 18, falls incomplete. But tell you what, you look up and down this receiving course, Shea, you've got... You know, Desmond Lewis, you've got Desmond uh, Desmond Smith, Damian Watts, Jatavius Wilson, Blake Gardner. I mean, the list goes a on. This talent. is a good group. You were right about that. A lot of talent. Big play receivers, explosive guys. And off to Willie Matthews. Up the middle. And he'll pick up three, maybe four yards on that carry. So a third down play now coming up for Central Arkansas. A couple of hard fought yards there by Willie Matthews, but it's certainly you'd like to see that because he was actually encountered by the defense at the line of scrimmage. Taylor Reed checks back in at quarterback for the Bears. This is a big third down in this game, Randy, for the Bearcats. I mean, right now, if they can stop and hold this Bears offense and force a punt, they stand to get good field position. They give up a first down here, and man, it's going to be uh, a further uphill struggle. There's Reed running room up the middle. He's going to have enough for the first down, crossing the 25 yard line. Man. That's a pickup of 10 yards yes. on the carry by Taylor Reed. But Mike Collins, defensive coordinator, had it designed perfectly. Let's take a look here. There's a couple of spies here on Taylor Reed, and you're going to see puts a little juke move on Fia Elo right there, who had the spy on him. And then powers his way to a first down. Clock zero here. First quarter has flown by here at Conway, but very successful for the home team. The Bears 21 to 3 lead here after one quarter. Second quarter from Conway coming up here on the Southland Conference Television Network. Don't look at me. Get your hair straight. 
Frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. Every day, kids witness bullying. For you. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, you, you'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can we transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen. And you listen good. Hey! Where's my sandwich? Terry? Terry! Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. Welcome back to the Stripes in Conway, Arkansas, where Central Arkansas leads Sam Houston State 21-3 as we get ready to start the second quarter. Let's look at scores from around the rest of the Southland Conference, starting with Thursday night and the River Bell Classic, Southeastern Louisiana wrapping up an undefeated conference campaign, 52-27 over Nichols. The battle for Chief Caddo today, Northwestern State leading Stephen F. Austin, 40 to 27, just over 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And in prime time, it's the battle on the border. McNeese crosses the Sabine River to face Lamar. A six o'clock start on ESPN3. And Randy, the Cowboys looking to lock up a great seed in the FCS playoffs. All and right. it won't be easy. Beaumont, no, but Lamar is an approved Lamar, football team. Absolutely, Ray yeah. Woodard, Bill Bradley, defensive coordinator, doing an outstanding job there for the Cardinals. Record doesn't show it, but much improved, as you said. Well, last week alone at home against Stephen F. Austin, you know, yep. that's a high octane offense, and they did a pretty good job against that Lumberjack uh, squad and won on a late field goal to win it. They did, and you think about what earlier in the year when they played Sam Houston State. Now, there was a lightning delay and a bunch of other things right. going on, but they held the Bearcats to 14 points. So the Cowboys met Viator. Long time rivalry. Be ready, man. Oh, good yeah. atmosphere there tonight in Beaumont. You bet. Prozo, Provost Humphrey Stadium. Second down and eight. Pass is caught from Howard. And that's going to be Blake Gardner with his first catch of the day. He's just a sophomore. Young receiving court. Desmond Smith's a junior. Desmond, uh, Desmond Lewis is a junior. Desmond Smith is a redshirt freshman. Gardner's a sophomore. Wilson's a freshman. They got it. They have several more good years here on this offense. Well, I like the poise too by Ryan Howard. He has done an outstanding job. Offensive line, first of all, giving him good time to look and locate receivers. But once he does that, he has the poise in the pocket. He doesn't get happy feet. It's a very comforting thing as a head coach. If you're Clint Conk, you look at that and you say, "Okay, he's getting it. He understands the offense. He's going through the progression and finding the open receivers." First and ten now for the 48-yard line. Willie Matthews, more running room, crosses a 40 near the 35. He was patient there on that left side, waited for a seam to open, and he took advantage of it. Well, it's a pretty simple design play, and again, Alec Willis, number 55, out leading. You see, he picks up two blocks on that play. Randy Fielo trying to get the strip there on the sideline, but not after Willie Matthews picks up another Bears first down. All the way down to the 36, Wilson in motion. Howard feeling the pressure, gets away from that, and actually gets the pass off to Wilson. And Wilson's got serious speed on that left side. Tell you what, he was wow. nearly wrapped up, just unloaded the football, and Wilson was wide open. How about the heads up play? You're going to see a couple of guys taking swipes here. At Ryan Howard, there's one. There's the other defender, and then he's basically sitting on top of his blocker. And somehow, 
somehow locates Jatavius Wilson. Wilson's a freshman from Bastrop, Louisiana. Howard, oh, you <laughs> little shuffle. That's not a shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> After fielding the low snap. Ryan Howard just it, it shot puts the ball. <laughs> Rick Barry, almost Rick Barry style, yeah. but it is a chest shot. Desmond Lewis. So we get another look at this. Right? Take, there it take, is. take a look there on the snap. It's low all the way. Nice recovery. Not only does he field it cleanly, well, they're on the end of the play, but it's just more of a shot put, but it picks up seven yards. Taylor Reed back in now for UCA. He'll keep it up the middle. And he's tripped up around the 12 yard line. And another first down for UCA. What a start here today. You see Willie Fritz, a little concerned now, Shay, on the sidelines at this difficult start for his Bearcat football team. Well, he's right to be concerned, Randy, because the Bearcat defense right now not able to get off the field against the Bears, and he knows that he doesn't have Brian Bell behind center. So he's got to go with the young quarterback and try to climb out of a hole trailing right now, 21 to three, but the Bears, Central Arkansas, looking to put another stamp and uh, touchdown in the end zone. There's a shot of Taylor Reed. Again, a sophomore. He and Ryan Howard continue to rotate. Dumps it off to Matthews. Matthews in for the touchdown. UCA strikes again here early second quarter. Willie Matthews had 37 catches coming into today's game, Randy, and no touchdowns. His first receiving touchdown on the season. 37 catches there and coming into today. Pretty good balance out of that backfield. He's run for nearly 500, approaching 250 yards through the air this season. Been a stable force in that UCA backfield. Point after up and good by Eddie Camara. And the Bears pulling away already here at Conway. 28 to 3 early. First half here. I'm one on Monkey Guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is 1 in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. 1 in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? 1 in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Welcome back, Conway, Arkansas. There he is, number 11, Brian Bell, the senior. Did not start today, sprained shoulder a week ago. He's been holding on kicks. But he was just warming up on the sidelines. He's talking to his teammates, Shay. Brian Bell's about to return to make yeah. his appearance here in this football game. And I tell you what, I am a little surprised that, that he is uh, potentially going to come out. But we'll find out after this kick, Randy. And well, he's a he's a senior. He yeah. knows what's on the line today. And you said it earlier so too. Far. Coach's son. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's looking to bring his team back. And as Chris Mikowski mentioned earlier, you don't know for sure if this is a must win for Sam Houston State, but you, you certainly feel like if you're a Bearcat, you got to win this game if you want to make it into the playoffs. Richard Sincere brings it out for the Bearcats. 
He has met around the 30 goes forward a couple of yards and Bearcats will take over on offense again major change at quarterback. Let's check in now with Chris Mikowski with more Chris Randy after that last score for Central Arkansas Brian Bell screaming at his teammates and his coaches he wanted in this game he had been warming up earlier but just with a hat on as soon as he finished screaming he went off grabbed his helmet had a couple more warm-up throws and now he is in this ball game we said emergency situation only down 28 3 I call that an emergency absolutely they're in a big hole right here now more than ever he needs his offensive line shade to protect him and Overall this season they have there's the only 11 sacks this season to protect Brian Bell handoff immediately goes to Timothy Flanders. Well you see the quarterback coming back in and truly a leader on this team we talk about there's so many you talk about Flanders and Bell that combination just those two guys and, and again we could talk a lot about Richard Sincere as well but Brian Bell is kind of the stabilizing force amongst all these weapons, and he is so effective as a quarterback. I'm guessing today that his runs will be limited, but just a threat of his run should help this Bearcat offense. Run there by Timothy Flanders, brought down by Bobby Watkins, number seven, the sophomore free safety for UCA. Third down play now coming up. They need about a yard here for a first down, maybe close to two, but. See where they mark it here at the 42 yard line. Yeah, they need about a yard here to get that first down picked up. Well, and I think the good news for the Bearcats is, as you said, if they can protect Bell, then I think the injury happened on his non throwing shoulder. There's Flanders has a hole, enough for the first down. Three sta straight runs by Flanders. The all time leading rusher in the Southland Conference. Yeah, came in with 5,200 or 329 yards and 63 touchdowns. Dealt with some injuries this year. And well, able he to has, bounce back to 1,000 yards. Yeah, he has been a little nicked up, but man, I tell you what, two time Southland Conference Player of the Year. Keyshawn Hill back there now. Bell will throw the football. Looking downfield, lost it up there. That pass is going to be intercepted at the 22 yard line. Pass was intended for Torrance Williams. A little too much hang time on that one. And the Bears pick it off. Another turnover for Sam Houston State. Well, Darius Reed, number 26, comes up with the interception. And you'll see this ball floats on Bell, Randy. We talked about this win laying down a little bit now, but throwing it into the wind. Read well there by Darius Reed. Picks up his second interception on the season and Bearcat defense now back out on the field. Now after this Bearcats defense to make a stop. They've not been, been able to do that so far today, but Central Arkansas takes over on the 29 yard line after that second turnover of this football game for Sam Houston State. Second and nine now coming up for the Bears. Picked up one as Clint Cock calls out instructions to his offense. It's Reed, that, that quarterback for UCA. And he's brought down by Mufa Debo. He's just a freshman. Debo's really gotten a lot of playing time this year. He really has. He's good along that front line rotation. He's got seven and a half tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Adebo doing a good job there and Randy here. This is an incredible again. We talk about these third downs. This is third and long this Bearcat defense needs to needs to stop the offensive assault if you will that the Bears are putting on them and they've just had so much success today. Howard going deep. That's going to be nearly intercepted should have been picked oh, off Desmond there. fight yeah. dropped the ball. Yeah, it was right in his hands around the 32 yard line. Falls incomplete. He knows he should have had that one. Yeah, you know, Randy too. They had man coverage out. So man free. Fight is the free safety. You see the cornerback Deontre Locke running stride for stride with the receiver, but there was a lot of turf. Open turf. Desmond fight. He just looked downfield, did not secure the ball, but at least for the Bearcats, for the moment, look like they're gonna be able to get off the field. Well, first defensive stop here for this defense, forcing the punt. 
Lawrence Williams back for Sam Houston State. Good hang time there. And the ball, is the ball loose? Now Williams held on to it. Well, I think he tried to make a play. He yeah. took a huge shot. And again, that's Desmond Smith. How about the special teams effort by Smith? Taking a break here, second quarter in Conway, Arkansas, 8.46 to go, 28-3 lead for UCA. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm on it. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're covered, Kevin. Thanks, Melinda. Uh, wait, I have blah blah insurance, so person, come help. <sighs> Hey, Grandma. Six callers ahead of us, Jimmy. You're not helping. Having insurance isn't the same as having State Farm. They're to help you anytime, anywhere, any way. That's getting to a better state. Contact your local State Farm agent. Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Visit NCAA.com slash FCS to reserve your seats today. Back live in Conway, Arkansas. 28-3 lead for UCA on Senior Day. And the Bearcat fans that have made their way here to Arkansas disappointed at the start, but Brian Bell... And company back in, but actually they'll begin this series with Richard Sincere out of the Bearcat formation. Sincere tries to turn that left corner. Gets it out to the 25-yard line, and Sincere a little slow getting up there on that UCA sidelines. There he is a, right there, took a hard hit as he was knocked out of bounds. Four-yard pickup on that carry by Sincere. Well, things just seem to hurt a little more when you get smashed around in the cold weather. Second down and six. Bell back there for Sam Houston State. Looking to throw the ball. Open receiver looking for a Torrance Williams underthrown there around the 40-yard line. I mean, you just have to wonder about, you know, Brian's health and, and that shoulder problem that he has. I mean, even if it's the non-throwing shoulder where the injury is, still, you've got to be able to, you, you know you're going to feel it when you're throwing and trying to release the ball, and it's hard on a cold day to get, get, to get anything yeah. to feel good. Yeah. Third down at six now for the Bearcats. Yeah, crossing pattern there, looking for his receiver. And Steven Williams. Steven Williams incomplete again. And the Bearcats will be forced to punt it away. Second series closing out for Brian Bell and these Bearcats. You know, Randy, the difference between these teams today so far in the first half is that the Bears' defense is forcing three and outs, and the Bearcats are having to punt into this, to this very difficult win. Clay Murphy back uh, for UCA around his own 35-yard line. Donovan will punt away for the Bearcats. Fair catch is made around the 41. So the Bears will take over. Excellent field position coming up. Still plenty of time left here, second quarter. 8-12 to go, first half. Central Arkansas leading 28-3 here in Conway. Clint Cock again, 14th season, career record. 104 and 59. 12 seniors going out today here on Senior Day in Conway.
handoff. Willie Matthews. And that's Michael Wade, I believe, in there on the stop. Free safety for Sam Houston State. So you're on the road in, a, in an environment that very few visiting teams have success in. So when you're in this kind of hole for Sam Houston, what do you what, what's the thinking on that sideline? Well, right now? You, you, you talk about the home field advantage first, and the Bears haven't lost a game on the stripes in the first two years of the stripes. And then this year against McNeese was their first loss. Passes offensively caught. doing another good job, Willie Matthews. Ryan Howard on the uh, pass, Matthews on the catch, and they are in Bearcat territory again. Well, this year with the loss to McNeese and Southeastern at home, but again, a very difficult place to play. But if you're Sam Houston State, Randy, you just you, you got to kind of stop the bleeding if you can, and right now this Bears offense executing at a high level. Matthews on the carry. Bearcats there to greet him around the 42. Fialo in on the stop. Second leading tackler on this Bearcats defense behind Tanner Brock. So you hear Fialo and Brock's name quite a bit. Two good linebackers for Sam Houston State. But one yard on that carry by uh, Matthews. Second down and nine now. They'll mark this at the 38 yard line. It's Taylor Reed. Taylor Reed pass is caught. That's Ryan or Clay Murphy. His first catch of the ball game. You get an offensive line doing a nice job of giving both quarterbacks, Howard and Reed, ample time to locate receivers. Clay Murphy came on a little drag route all the way across the field, picks up about four or five yards on that catch. Murphy in motion for UCA. Howard in the pocket. He'll unload it there at the 30-yard line. Pass was intended there for Matthews, but right there to greet it quickly was Jesse Beauchamp, the senior. Brings up fourth down now for UCA. So back to back series, this Bearcats defense. You know, keeps him out of the end zone, but now you got a field goal attempt, a 50-yard attempt coming up by Eddie Camaro. Well, keep in mind, that play started on the Bears' 40-yard line, so they were able to get it into Bearcat territory before having to attempt the field goal. But, again, with that wind at the back, this is probably one that you want to try to take a shot at. Uh-oh, fumbled the snap there. Ball's loose. Bearcats will bring him down, and they will take over. And Clay Murphy. Fumbled snap there by Murphy. He recovered by then it was too late. Bearcats there to make the stop. Uh, Coach Conk not happy. And you know, with Coach Conk, and you know this, it's about the execution. You know, he wants to make sure that you're executing. Doing things the right way and, and knowing that you practiced it and, and, and when you've got a team on the ropes like they have the Bearcats right now, you don't want to give them a great starting field position and a turnover on downs. Yeah, Coach Cock was not pleased with that, so Bearcats get it back. Pass is caught from Bell. Out to, I believe that's Gerald Thomas with the catch. His first catch of the day, so first completion of the afternoon for Brian Bell. And I like the safe throw by Brian Bell because he's going to the inside receiver, and he led Gerald Thomas perfectly on that play, Randy. And that's probably how this Bearcat offense needs to kind of reconfigure and redesign itself, throttle back a little bit, make the safe throws, and let your players make plays. Timothy Flanders running room up the middle, and he'll get it down to the 36-yard line. That's a pickup of 13 yards on that play. His longest run of the afternoon. Well, trailing 28 to 3, I would say that this possession and almost every possession for these Bearcats is going to be critical that they score touchdowns. There's Daryl Thomas again. Another catch. Now close to the 30. 233 yard line so a couple of quick strikes here for Brian Bell good zip on the ball there 
I'd love to get Timothy Flanders going here this afternoon. Ride their big horse there in that backfield. But when you're down at this point, already 25 points, you got work to do late first half. Flanders up the middle, crosses the 30. Tackle made by Jonathan Woodard, sophomore defensive end. You know, a very reliable back, and we've been talking about Flanders, and you see he checks out, and Keyshawn Hill checks in. Here's Hill, bounces off. One oh, tackle and move. two. Keeps moving those legs down to the 22, 23-yard line. Excellent run there by Keyshawn Hill. And Justin Hurd, number 49, tackled him three times on that play because he got away from the first time. Take a look here. Keyshawn Hill's going to take the handoff. He's going to be met around the backfield by number 41. He's got a good, or excuse me, 49. He's got a good shot at him, but he does that 360 move. Justin Hurd missed a tackle there for UCA. Yeah, he ends up finishing up on it, but that's a heads-up play there by Keyshawn Hill. And the Bears are going to call a timeout. We'll talk it over here. Block stops with 4.34 to go first half. So Bearcats in a big hole looking for some kind of on the board down 28 to 3. Got the Mid South Bank halftime show coming up as well each and every week. Hey, Randy. So, you know, what's happening yeah. across Southland Conference? And, and just talking about Brian Bell right now, that it, it was his throwing shoulder that was injured last week at Southeastern. But good to see him back and that being able to make some throws. Toss it out the field. Check in with Chris Mikoski. Chris. Well, Randy, coming up on that Mid South Bank halftime report, we will reveal the 50th anniversary Southland Conference all time team, all those incredible players through the years. Also, Megan Clemente in the Southland Digital Network Studios with all the stories from around the Southland and, of course, first half highlights and stats. Pass play from Brian Bell. Touchdown, Bearcats. Keyshawn Make sure no Hill. flags are down. It is Bell to Keyshawn Hill and the Bearcats strike late in the first half here. You take a look at this. You got the play fake there. You got both Hill and Flanders in the backfield. Man to man coverage. Keyshawn Hill, too much speed. Runs pass for Darius Winston. And that was a perfect lob pass dropped in by Brian Bell. One after coming up by Luke Swimberga for Sam Houston State. It's up and it is good. We talked about Brian Bell providing a spark shape. He has certainly done that. Touchdown drive, ending touchdown pass here to Keyshawn Hill. 28-10 here in Conway. So, I got this new family, and I don't know what it is about this one, but she can't seem to put down that toy all day long. Tap, 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 tap. Oh, and she even talks to it. She talks to that more than she talks to him. What's up, bro? Nice shirt. Who's she talking to? Her mom? She talks to her mom a lot. A single ember from a wild over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Groove's Zinker Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah. worth it. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Right, back live in Conway, Arkansas. There is Brian Bell on the sideline, Shay, and he marched him right down. They took advantage, and he's the veteran leader 
That's what he does. Well, he is, Randy, but think about this. This drive by the Bearcats happens after they turn over or, or the muffed uh, field goal attempt by the Bears. It's exactly what Coach Conk was frustrated about and talking to his team about. Latavius Wilson brings it out for Central Arkansas. He has met quickly at the 25 yard lines and shoved back a couple of yards. Good special teams effort. Michael, Michael Wade, Wade with the stop. Yeah, he's had some big plays on special teams. Great open field tackle on the punt to Jatavius Wilson and on that particular play. And right now, trying to dig their way out of a hole, the Bearcat defense. Last couple of possessions, Randy, they've been able to kind of keep the Bear offense in check, but not really just shut them down. Right. Of course, they had the field goal attempt. Bearcat defense with just over four minutes to go here in the first half. Well, doing a great job of navigating the waters of white jerseys. I mean, a couple of guys missed, ran through an arm tackle or two, picks up a first down for the Bears. Ryan Howard out there at quarterback for UCA. Pass is tipped by Jared Brown at the line of scrimmage. Brown, the 6'3", 261-pound senior. He's a transfer into this program when he arrived, much like Andrew Weaver. Well, Ryan Howard trying to get the ball out quickly, as he has done all first half, Randy, finding open receivers. That time, Jarrett Brown read the eyes of the quarterback, elevated at the right time, and deflected the pass. Second down and 10 now for Central Arkansas from the 41 yard line. Howard looking downfield. Fires, catches made, but they're saying he's out of bounds. That was Courtney Whitehead well, trying to get that foot in, but not enough there. Yeah, he was working the sideline there. Both officials, field judge and line judge, clearly call him out of bounds. Let's take another look at it here. Great camera angle there, and hard to tell if he was, if the white was in the purple or not. Doesn't matter. Both officials on the University of Central Arkansas sideline called it incomplete from the get-go. Another big stop opportunity here for this defense. Third and 10 now for UCA. Pressure on Howard, gets the pass off. That's Whitehead again. He is met quickly at the 46-yard line. He's not going to pick up the first down, Randy, but that was a heck of a catch by Whitehead. Running all by himself underneath the coverage, and he catches it, tips it back to himself with one hand. Take a look here in a little air throw. And Gonna catch it with the right hand, just puts the mid up there, not able to pick up the first down, but did get positive yards. All right, so Torrance Be Williams back. back. Yeah, Torrance Williams. He's man. dangerous. You give him a little bit of room, he'll take it the distance. There he is right there. He's had a good return year for the Bearcats. And he's averaging 17.8 yards of return. Bobble the snap there, and man, what a great special. Man, we were seeing some outstanding play from both teams on specials on special teams. Absolutely. Good job there by UCA. Justin Love coming down on that tackle. Senior on senior day making a big play. There's a look at it again, and Mark Williams had a little bit of problem there on the uh, receiving end of that. Nearly coughed it up, but Love right there to make the stop. So Bearcats get it back now with three minutes to go here. First half down 28 to 10. How important would this be to get some points going to the locker room here, Shep? Well, three minutes left. I think any points that the Bearcats can score in this game, Randy, they're going to need. Boy, and Tim Flanders, Jonathan Woodard. How well was that played? They read that well. So often now, you know, a healthy Brian Bell is a, is a very dangerous runner, but with that shoulder, you just, I don't think you're going to see much of that today. Yeah, I think his run game will be extremely limited. And maybe, as Chris said earlier, Mikowski from the sideline, the run of Brian Bell might be what's needed in an emergency. Uh, he's looking for his receiver around the 20 yard line. That was Gerald Thomas right off his hands. Incomplete. So third down and long now for the Bearcats coming up. Clock stops. 
And this is where you hopefully use a little bit more clock and not give UCA enough time here to get, get the football back and do something with it. Well, I tell you what, if you're the Bears right now, you're going to pin your ears back and make sure that you do not allow this Bearcat offense to get a first down because you stand to get outstanding field position with plenty of time left on the clock. Bearcats looking for the conversion. Bell over the middle, pass is caught. Wow. Big hit there on Chance Nelson. Right across the middle, you know the contact is coming. What a job there by Nelson. What a bone rattling shot. I mean, Chance Nelson, I tell you what, that's a heck of a job hanging on that ball. Blake Childress just lowers the boom. No one you're going to get, excuse me, that's 49. That's Justin Hurd. Drop the hammer, and you can see Nelson there getting some help on the sideline. Big conversion for Sam Houston State. Well, they need Chance Nelson back out there. Hopefully he'll be okay and can return to this offense. Sophomore receiver, man, that's a, he made a great catch, knowing that you're going to take the shot. And how about Bell with the throw on that? I mean, he threw a dart in between right some purple it. jerseys. Second down and seven now from the 32-yard line for the Bearcats. Well, he and Stephen Williams, Brian Bell, Stephen Williams not on the same page there. Couple of those so far. Just everybody's trying to get back on the same page now. How hard is it for you know Brian Bell miss you know during the week the snap, but he's he's a veteran. He's been through this before. Is he the type of quarterback that doesn't take long to come back out and get back in sync? It certainly does, Randy. Look, this is the uh, what eleventh uh, game of the season for these guys. Yeah, he, he's been actually, starting yeah, every 12th game. Twelfth game, actually. Yeah. Twelfth game. Yeah. I mean, he, sorry, played eleven games. Got injured late in, the, in uh, Hammond, but uh, yeah, no, he can he can kind of get back in and can hit stride. And again, he's been doing it. He's a four-year starter. It's not like it's his first county fair right. rodeo. <laughs> With the Bear defense now, they do stiffen here, and will force a punt. Fourth and about six, almost seven yards. Yeah, they're going to get the ball back here. Just over a minute to go. Clint in the first Conk. half. And Clint Conk calling a timeout here. Let's toss it down, check in again with Chris Markowski. Chris? Randy UCA saying goodbye to 12 seniors today, and what a class it has been. 31 wins entering today, looking for a 32nd. Two trips to the FCS playoffs. Winrick Smothers and Chase Dixon, such a huge part of that. And, of course, they're missing the last part of the season due to injury. Carl Brady as well. One senior not included in these numbers, Dominic Brown, defensive back. He injured his knee in the Colorado game. He's hoping to get a waiver from the NCAA, and he should be back next year. All right, thanks for the update. And senior day is always special. I mean, these guys have been around. They put in a lot of time and effort. And well, it's where you make the strongest bonds in your college career, and, and quite frankly, it could be is where you make the strongest bonds in your life. Right. Because you go through so much turmoil as a student athlete, and, you know, it's good to be able to share those times and enjoy having senior day and, Getting to share it with your teammates, or, uh, I can tell you there's nothing better than that. Clay Murphy, fair catch is made around the 30 yard line. So, with 1.22 to go here in the first half, UCA will get the football back. Another big defensive series for this Bearcat team down 28 to 10. They were down 28 to 3. Now, well, right now, the, rally the, back with that touchdown. Yeah, right now, it's very simple for Mike Collins and the Bearcats defense. You cannot. You cannot allow a score. Field goal, you cannot allow points on this drive if you're the Bearcats. There's Howard looking for the deep ball. That's Damian Watts. He's got him inside the five. Touchdown, Central Arkansas. And DeAndre Locke on the coverage. Damian Watts averaging 16 yards a catch. I say you cannot allow a score. Ryan Howard throws a perfect strike downfield. Great protection. Man-to-man -man coverage, which these Bearcat defenders love to do. DeAndre Locke trailing there. Damian Watts comes up with a huge play for the Bears. That took all of nine seconds. 
And the Bears are on the board again. Extra point coming up. Eddie Kamara. It's up and it is good. 70 yard touchdown pass. Ryan Howard to Damian Watts. And the Bears extend their lead to 35 to 10. Let's check in now with Chris Mikowski once again. Randy, tomorrow morning we'll learn the 24 team field for the NCAA Division I FCS playoffs. Those teams will be looking to get to Frisco, Texas, the Southland Conference. Proud to host the championship game again, this time January 4th at now Toyota Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Go to NCAA.com slash FCS for ticket information. Tickets as of this point sold out. But you can get your name on the waiting list and also exchange with other fans who may decide when their team's limited, when their team's slash FCS, Randy. All right, good stuff. January 4th. Hopefully the Southland Conference perhaps could be represented again. We've done the last two years. Last two years, years to stay, But we got, we got to keep it going and then uh, keep it going and win one. That's right. All right, minute uh, 13 to go here, first half. 35 to 10. Eddie Camara will kick it away. This time a deep kick. He's been keeping him short most of the first half. That'll go through the end zone. And the Bearcats will get it back here. Down 25. Not the way they diagram this first half at all. Boy, not at all. You're right about that. Eddie Camara doing a good job. Another senior on this team. Played at Cedar Hill. Just outside of Dallas for Joey McGuire and the yep. Longhorns. Pretty sure Eddie Kamara was on a state championship team. I want to say he was. He I was. think you and I were there. Quarterback by <laughs> William Cole. <laughs> that was good. A, that, that, that was a great Longhorn team. And Joey McGuire, what a great job he has done. And that's an example uh, here at, at Central Arkansas being yep. in the South and Conference. It's, it opens doors recruiting wise in the state of Texas. For Absolutely. Pass is caught to Torres Williams out of bounds at the 32 33 yard line. Clock stops with 108 to go first half. An eight yard pickup from Bell to Torrance Williams. Williams is the leading receiver on this Bearcat football team. Well, he was doing a little hop step there, like he was going to try to stay in bounds, but his momentum carried him out, and that's a good thing for the Bearcat offense because he picked up eight yards and stopped the clock. And Bell getting out of bounds there again. Yeah, Torrance Williams again out of bounds at the 43. Close to the 44 yard line. An important series here. Not much time left, but Bearcats have given up that big play on that pass play of 70 yards from Howard to Watts. They need an answer here offensively. New set of downs from the 43 yard line. There's Bell. You can see Randy, he does not want to run the right. ball. And you, you can't blame him because that shoulder has got to be extremely tender. Brian Bell making the very wise choice of skirting out of bounds after picking up about six yards, seven yards. But, you know, you could tell he kind of wanted to push it upfield a little bit and then the instincts using were there. that. Yeah, <laughs> the instincts were definitely there, but discretion being the better part of Valor steps out of bounds wisely Timothy Flanders in the backfield just to the right of Brian Bell second down and three after Bell picked up seven he'll dump it off over the middle it's picked off and that could be another UCA touchdown Marcus Peters to the house another touchdown for UCA I can tell you, Randy, Brian Bell did not want to throw that ball. He saw the delayed blitz coming by the Bears. And he steps off the back foot. Take a look here. He's going to look. And then Justin Hurd comes late. And Brian Bell, not wanting to get hit, trying to protect that shoulder, dumps the ball off weakly. Marcus Peter picks it up. And there's no way that Brian Bell is going to have a chance to bring down Marcus Peters. You saw him make that safe slide, just getting out of the way of contact. Extra point up and good. And it's a route here in Conway. 44 seconds left. And there's a shot of Brian Bell. What a career he has had. Gutting it out today with the sore shoulder, the sprained shoulder that he injured a week ago. 
And you're right, he definitely wanted that football back. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. No, he certainly doesn't. And it means he is not playing anywhere close to 100%, but trying to do whatever he can to help his team. And just right now, the UCA Bears are on fire. They're playing outstanding on the offensive side of the ball. Defensively, they're putting pressure. And again, on that particular play, it looked like Brian Bell wanted to wait a little bit longer with only that three-man rush. But then when Justin Hurd comes in and forces him to throw the ball off of his back foot while he's feigning away, just didn't have enough juice on it. Marcus Peters comes up with a big play for the Bears. Well, he's a senior. How about that on senior day for Marcus Peters? You'll remember that one for a while. It turns out for a touchdown. There's Richard Sincere back for the Bearcats. They're going to get this football, and I would imagine they'll snap it, take a knee, and get to the locker room to try to get this thing figured out. Short kick will be brought out by Sincere at the 12, and he's brought down at the 30 yard line. Tackle made by Justin Burdett of UCA. So Bearcats back out now with 40 seconds left. Do you agree, Shea? They should not take any more chances. I mean, when you're down this much, just take a knee and then go, you know, head to the locker room and huddle up, find out how to fix things. Yeah, that probably seems like the prudent thing to do because I don't know that really you can't have Brian Bell wind up and throw something hard downfield because they're going into the win for one, two, the shoulder injuries there. And but I'll tell you what, Bearcat offense, not content to take a knee here. Pass is caught there by Williams around the 38 yard line. Well, Brandon DeWitt and John Trotter doing a good job of protecting Bell on that play. Mid South Bank halftime show just moments away. Chris Mikoski reported all the very latest in the Southland Conference. Plus, we'll be joined as well by Sam Houston State Athletic Director Bobby Williams. Always good to catch up with Bobby. See what's happening there within Sam Houston State's athletic program. Yeah. Willie Fritz going to use a timeout here, Randy. 24 seconds left. There's Coach Fritz. Disappointing first half for his Bearcats football program. Now 42 to 10 here in Conway. Bearcats made the bus ride up from Huntsville yesterday, left early. And like they always do, they have to break it up a little bit. They stopped in Texarkana for a quick workout indoor facility there at Texas High and continued on got in here late afternoon early evening you mentioned this cold day that we have here I, I notice you keep backing up you're about six inches every time I look to my left you're backing up to the heater I'm just trying to clear space what? for you because oh, you, you said you, you, said you, you got this. your gloves on and make oh, Brian Bell yeah Bell nearly brought down and gets that one off, but that's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, Max Randy, was attended could, there for number 80 at Cheyenne Motlock. You can tell Bell trying to make something happen for this Bearcat offense. He kind of pulled the ball down, bounced it up in the middle, and then rolls back out to the right-hand side and then tried to get the touch pass to Molig over the top of a couple of Bear defenders. Good coverage there by Central Arkansas, and they got two safeties, so you know they're very content to keep everything in front of them for the final 15 seconds of the half. There's Bell on the run, and pass is going to be incomplete. He was looking on that uh, for Gerald Thomas again, overthrew him, and clock stops now with eight seconds left. So from the 43 yard line third down and 10 now for the Bearcats as we get close to wrapping up the first half here in Conway 
See the UCA band all in place. They're ready for a halftime performance. What a great band. I always enjoy watching their you band bet. here when we make the trip here to Conway. Do a great job. Bell and Torrance Williams again hook up. He'll be out of bounds at the 49. Four seconds left now. Now it is fourth down. How about the fours here? You got fourth down, four yards to go, four seconds left in the half. <laughs> Yeah, Flanders just to the right of uh, Brian Bell. This should be the final play of the first half. Pressure coming. Bell gets away. And he'll just get rid of it right there and avoid the contact, which is critical with that sprained shoulder he has. And that'll do it here. The first half in Conway. What a half for the Bears of UCA. And they'll head to the locker room with a 42 to 10 lead over Sam Houston State. Right now, let's take it down to the field, check in with Chris Mikoski and Coach Clint Conner. Randy, thank you very much. And Clint, I imagine 99.99% .99 of our viewers across the network are shocked by the score. Are you? I'm proud of where our football team's playing. We really challenge them to play at a high level with confidence and execution in senior day. You know, these seniors have meant an awful lot to our football program, and, uh, you know, we wanted to come out and jump out and make them uncomfortable, and uh, I think we've done that. And the seniors, like you said, these guys are reaching up deep inside of them to pay tribute to these seniors, including the tribute to uh, one of your injured players today, Chase Dixon. I think that's been pretty incredible. Yeah, pretty cool deal right there. You know, we're a good football team. You know, um, we've had some tough breaks during the year. Um, but, you know, we still got another half to go, and I'm proud of the way our football team's playing. And, you know, we just got to keep executing, playing clean, and, uh, you know, got to tackle a little bit better. But I I'm, I'm, I'm real pleased in all three phases. Coach, I appreciate it. Good luck in the second half. Thanks, Chris. Clint Conk joining us here on the stripes. His Bears looking to pull the upset against Sam Houston State, Randy. All right, Chris, thanks. 42 to 10 lead for UCA, and the halftime show is about to begin. Mid South halftime show will get underway here on the network. We'll check in with Megan Clemente as well. She'll take a look at that Lamar McNeese game uh, tonight, prime time here at the Southland Conference. More highlights in our interview as well with Sam Houston State Athletic Director Bobby Williams when we come back. starts with the same goal it's the goal of every team it's the reason each week they give everything they've got each team strives to make their dream a reality the dream become the very best in college football but only one team will earn the ultimate title ncaa national champions what a great atmosphere Experience it live. The 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship game. Game day begins outside the stadium at Tailgate Town, a free event where college football fans and families get in on all the action. We any fun. Test your skills, meet the stars of the game, and enjoy the pregame party as the anticipation to kick off builds. From the moment the players arrive at the stadium to the post-game championship award ceremony. Thank you to the best fans in America! You can be part of history cheering on the nation's best. The 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game, Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Go online at NCAA.com slash FCS and reserve your seats today. Make a date with champions and experience it live. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. 
That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates. We're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. This is the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report on the Southland Conference Television Network. We've reached the break from the stripes between Sam Houston State and Central Arkansas. We'll get you back to Conway for more from Randy, Shea, and Chris in a few minutes. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Clementi and welcome to the Southland Digital Network Studios. After the Cats and Bears wrap things up, we'll have a primetime border war between McNeese and Lamar. Plus, it's national championship time in cross country. And on the hardwood, men's and women's teams are showing that they are Southland strong. Sixth-ranked McNeese State closes out its regular season with a game at Lamar. Southeastern has already clinched the league title, but a McNeese win would still leave the Cowboys in good shape for a high seed in the FCS playoffs. McNeese rolled up 480 yards of total offense versus the number one ranked defense in the conference, Northwestern State, last weekend. Lamar got a thrilling last-second victory over Stephen F. Austin. Wide receiver Reggie Bagleton had a school record, 18 catches for 167 yards and two touchdowns. A win would be the sixth of the season for the Cardinals, the most since 1979. Game time is 6 p.m. in Beaumont and has been added to the ESPN3 and ESPN game plan schedule. The basketball season is really ramping up and a full schedule of non-conference games is getting the teams ready. These are the games where the coaches find out how the team is gelling and what still needs to be done to get ready for conference play. In men's play, Northwestern State is looking for a second straight NCAA tournament bid, and the Demons really added to their resume last week by winning at Auburn. They erased a 14-point deficit and beat the Tigers 111-92. Jalen West poured in 30 points and added a career-best nine rebounds, along with six assists in the come-from-behind victory. The women are also making some statements with a pair of wins over CUSA teams last Thursday. McNeese hosted Rice and came away with a 65-54 victory, while Lamar traveled to San Antonio and defeated UTSA 63-59. Gia Ayers had a career-high 24 points. Northwestern State got a career-high 28 points from Keisha Lee and beat Houston from the American Athletic Conference 74-70. And across country, the NCAA regionals were last weekend, and the Marmen finished third in the South Central Regional at Baylor, just missing the national meet as a team. But individually, Matt Johnson and Ash Harrell are headed to nationals. This will be Johnson's fourth consecutive trip to the national championship. Harrell will be running in the championship for the first time. For the women, only freshman Brooke Kassar of Central Arkansas is moving on to the nationals. She finished seventh in the regional with a school record time of 20 minutes, 32.5 seconds. The championship meet is this weekend in Indiana State in Terre Haute, Indiana. Seems hard to believe that the football regular season wraps up this weekend. The FCS selection show is Sunday morning on ESPNU, so tune in to see who the Southland's best will face in the playoffs. Remember to get updates everywhere you go by downloading the Southland Conference app for iPhone, Android, and tablet. I'm Megan Clemente. Thanks for joining me all this season on the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report. Next up, we'll head back to Conway where Chris Mykoski will reveal the Southland Conference 50th anniversary all-time football team. Stay tuned for more of the Sam Houston Bearcats and Central Arkansas Bears on the Southland Conference Television Network. Think of the NCAA as a spirit squad, cheering for student athletes at every big event and every small one. We'd be there in the classroom, at graduation, at their first job interview. Okay, so don't think of us as a spirit squad. Think of us as a mascot. Well, just know we're always there for student athletes.
This is the Mid-South Bank Halftime Report, live in Conway, Arkansas, where Central Arkansas leads Sam Houston State 42-10. to 10. This is the final day of the regular season in the Southland Conference 50th anniversary year. It's been great looking back at so many incredible players over the years, and every week we've asked fans to go to our Facebook page and vote for the top players at each position. Those votes, in combination of a ballot by experts from across the region, have decided on this prestigious team. Here is the Southland Conference 50th anniversary all-time squad. There's no one better suited to lead the Southland Conference all-time offense than Stephen F. Austin's Jeremy Moses. He won the 2010 Walter Payton Award as the top player in the FCS led the Southland in passing for three consecutive years and holds the league's all-time records in passing yards, completions, and touchdowns. Landers around that right side, leaps over and in for the touchdown. Taking handoffs from Moses is Sam Houston State's Timothy Flanders, the only current Southland student athlete to make the all-time team. Joining Flanders in the backfield is McNeese State's Buford Jordan, a first-team selection in 1981, 82, and 83, he was the Southland's first 4,000-yard career rusher. The offensive line is anchored by 12-year NFL vet Marcus Spears from Northwestern State. At tight end, Louisiana Tech's Mike Barber. The Bulldog star was an All-American in 1974, then an Oilers second-round pick in 1976. LaTex Roger Carr leads the receiving core. He was an All-American in 1972 and 73, a first-round pick of the Colts in 1974, and a 10-year NFL vet. The other all-time wide receiver is Sam Houston State's Matt Dominguez. With 3,273 yards, he's the Southland's all-time leading pass catcher. Switching to the defensive side of the ball and one man you'd never want to see lining up across from you, La Tech legend Fred Dean. The 1974 All-American played in the NFL for 11 years, reaching four Pro Bowls. He's a member of the college and pro football halls of fame. Also along the D-line, 1995 All-American Kavika Pittman from McNeese and Troy's Al Lucas the 1999 Buck Buchanan Award winner. SFA's Jeremiah Trotter makes the all-time team at linebacker. His 11 years in the NFL included four Pro Bowls. I'm Darius Webb of the world champion Baltimore Ravens. The Southland is loaded at defensive back, including Nichols' great Ladarius Webb. The 2007 and 2008 All-American is in his fifth season with the Ravens and earned a Super Bowl ring last year. The head coach of this team of all-time greats is Maxie Lambright. He led Louisiana Tech to three consecutive national championships from 1972 through 1974. Here's the complete first team on offense. You look at the linemen and Bruce Colley out of Texas Arlington, a 1984 All-American, eight years in the NFL. A pair of O-linemen from Arkansas State, Ray Brown and Randy Barnhill. Imagine lining up against those guys in the mid-80s. On defense, so strong in the secondary. You heard about Webb at Daryl Pounds, Zach Bronson, Leonard Smith, every one of those guys an All-American and with a lengthy NFL career. The specialist, McNeese State's Sean Zelfranz, a three-time All-American and the Southland's career field goal leader. Chad Stanley from SFA had eight years in the NFL and returning kicks for this all-time team. Lumberjack legend, Grolin Crawford, an All-American in 2010 and 2011. Go to Southland.org for the full teams, a first team and a second team as we honor the best over 50 years in the Southland Conference. Now let's head upstairs. Athletic Director for Sam Houston State, Bobby Williams is with Randy McElroy. All right, thanks a lot, Chris. Uh, we were watching uh, the, the all-time, the video that was running there on some of the all-time greats. 
You get a trip down memory lane. I mean, so many great players have come through this conference over the years, and uh, I know Sam Houston State was represented as well. It was nice to see that. Uh, you know, I've been here 32 years and competing in this conference since 1987. I've either coached against them or watched them play in some form or fashion. So a lot of great names and great athletes on that on that team. All right, so far today it's not going the Bearcats' way. Uh, this is a big one coming in. When you look at postseason situation, you guys needed a win. Still another half of football left here, but uh, this was all about you needed a W today. And hopefully the big second yeah, half. Tough day. There's always a tough interview at halftime on a <laughs> score like that. But, you know, it's a shame, too, because uh, we've had such great senior leadership over the last three years, a lot of great moments in our program. You know, this this group of seniors has really changed uh, our university and, and, and our athletic program and how people view us. And, you know, it's always disappointing, but I can look back and see so many great days that they've had in the past. You talk about the national landscape. Uh, when you make back-to-back -back runs to the national championship game, the Sam Houston State name, and the branding is certainly out there, isn't it? It really is. You know, every time you see the SH Paw on our field and it's on uh, any TV that you see and uh, everybody's wearing it on campus uh, around the city of Houston, around Montgomery County, across the state, and you see it on the back of cars. It's just really, really very pleasing to see that. Lastly, I want to ask you quickly about the run Mayfridge Rock that is now part of the uh, stadium and kind of a new tradition there. Talk about that. Yeah, we started that uh, our last game and uh, Ron Mayfridge was a great Bearcat for us. Uh, played a important role in supporting our university and, and our athletic program and we wanted to, a couple uh, uh, of his uh, fraternity brothers uh, Ron Koska and John Bright wanted to recognize him and we were able to let us do that as an athletic park so we started a little tradition with the football team and hopefully it'll just keep growing and growing and, and we've got the 21 game winning streak at Bower Stadium so we can continue that next year. Always good to see you Bobby Thanks, Williams. Andy. In his 17th year as athletic director at Sam Houston State. Appreciate the time. Right now, let's toss it back downstairs to Chris Mikowski. Chris? Randy, thank you very much. Always great to hear from Bobby. His Bearcats down 42 to 10 as we get set for the second half. We're on the stripes in Conway, Arkansas, all across more than 20 affiliates on the Southland Conference television network. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. But it wouldn't be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret thoughts you smile. Oh, my, the sources say that chicken mm. soup has proven it's found their way out of this Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to the Mid-South Bank Halftime Show. Highlights uh, from the first half, right? Bill came into this game, Shay, and connected here to Keyshawn. He did, Randy, but Brian Bell is in limited capacity because he cannot effectively run the ball, but the Bears offense, Willie Matthews putting in a touchdown there, his first touchdown catch on the year. 
And Ryan Howard was having an outstanding first half in that rotation of quarterbacks with Taylor Reed as well. Again, continuing to do what they need to do. And then defensively, the Bears, Marcus Peters picks off an easy pass and he glides into the end zone for a touchdown. It's been a very dominant half by the UCA Bears. They're on senior day in Conway, 42 to 10 lead for Central Arkansas over Sam Houston State. Take a look at the halftime stats. And Besides the score, we look at the total offense uh, approaching 400 already for UCA. Well, it is, Randy, but look at those turnovers. Three turnovers, great field position by the Bears, and they've yep. taken advantage of every one of those and put up the points. All right, halftime is about to wrap up here in Conway, and we will get you ready for the second half, the Bears and Bearcats. A couple of minutes away, they're back on the field. We'll have it for you straight ahead on the Southland Conference Television Network. At Sam Houston State University, you can turn dreams into reality. I like digital forensics because I want to help stop some of the crimes in society. I think getting a degree will help me in the future because it will give me an advantage of getting a job. If someone was transferring colleges, I would recommend Sam Houston State University because of the atmosphere and the support from the professors. Sam Houston State University. Discover a great name in Texas education. At the University of Central Arkansas, I've encountered world-changing academics and game-changing athletics, helping me become a regular on the Southland Conference Honor Roll. I was able to graduate early with a business degree, and now I'm seeking a second degree in physical education, all while playing Division I volleyball, softball, and soccer. UCA put me and my education front and center. Learn how at uca.edu. Bears lead 42 to 10 over the Bearcats as we get set to start the second half of play in Conway, Arkansas. A quick chat with Coach Willie Fritz. He said the key word at the halftime locker room was solutions. He fully recognizes they're not doing anything right on either side of the ball. And a note from UCA, we talked about the rotating quarterbacks. We won't see any of that in the second half. Sophomore quarterback Taylor Reed suffered a concussion. He is done for the day. All right, Chris, appreciate that. So we will see Ryan Howard in the second half for Central Arkansas. Temperature continues to drop here in Conway. Things heating up offensively in that first half for sure for UCA. 42 to 10 lead here as we get ready to begin the second half. Eddie Camara will kick it off. Keyshawn Hill back for Sam Houston State along with Richard Sincere. Really good halftime show and a good tribute by the UCA band. And besides the players, their band members were honored here on senior day as well. Sincere drops the kick, recovers there, brings it out, and he has met hard at the 15 yard line. Yeah, just what a heard. Hit. He's starting middle linebacker contributing on special teams. Take another look here after picking up the muffed kickoff return, just squares up perfectly, does Justin Hurd at 6'1, 230 pounds. If I'm Richard Sincere, I'm checking a filling or two. Make sure they're all there. Oh, <laughs> well, Brian Bell will start the second half for Sam Houston State. Of course, he came in for just joining us. Sprained shoulder a week ago. Did not start today's game. But when they were down, I believe it, 28 to 3, I believe, is when he came back into the game. And some struggles offensively for the Bearcats. Well, Brian Bell, Randy, we've been talking about him coming into the game today. He only needed 47 yards to reach 2,000 for the season in the first half. He had 86 yards and one touchdown. So over the 2,000-yard mark for the season and doing it on a, I'm going to call it a less than optimal arm, and you'll see a flag down here. Yeah, there'll be interference call on UCA. Pass was intended. I believe that's Richard Sincere downfield. We'll see if it's interference and or or holding, excuse me. I think it was on Justin Love. He was on the coverage there of Richard Sincere. Well, the Bearcats, and if you will, if Fred's, you know, you're telling the team at the half is, look, forget the score. 
forget the score, come out, start over again. Have yeah. a great second half, play an inspired second half. I mean, these guys are playing for their, uh, battling for their playoff lives. And there's going to be another penalty flag, Randy. Defender, Gerald Marvin Thomas Mitchell. Was, yeah, Mitchell. Runs over the top of Thomas. Yeah, Gerald Thomas, the intended receiver, tripped up around the 40. And that's right on the Central Arkansas sideline. And Clint Cock has got both arms as wide as they'll go saying, come on, you cannot call that play or that penalty. The receiver and defender tangle their feet. There is no, no foul. Yeah, Coach Comp got his way, Randy. You got <laughs> to work him a little bit on you that sideline. Especially when it's your sideline. <laughs> Here's the pass play again from Bell. Take a look at it. See, he and Marvin Mitchell and the officials, after throwing the flag, confer and decide that it's incidental contact. Which, of course, doesn't make Coach Fritz happy, but he's all the way on the other sideline. Can't say much from over there. Second down and 10 now from the 37-yard line. How much further back are you going to go up here in our little our little uh, halt that we have up here to do the game from? Hey, the, tell you what, the heat, the heater is working, oh, man. man. I'm telling you that Brian right Bell, Randy, you see him. Got took a shot there, and man, team, that's just it, you know, it, it. There's no way that any of that can feel good for Brian Bell. He is really battling right now. Third down now for Sam Houston State. They need to get to the 47 yard line. Opening drive, second half here at Conway. Looking for Torrance Williams. And he Passes takes a, complete another there. shot from Marvin Mitchell coming off the safety blitz. Brian Bell taking a look at number two as he gets rid of the ball. You can see Mitchell bearing down on him. Clean hit. Bearcats will punt it away. Play Murphy back to receive now for Central Arkansas around the 25 yard line. So you want some of that heater now, don't you? Oh, man, I'm just trying to get you out of this spot. Now I know why you're back here. Oh, my goodness. Murphy there with a the fair catch. Fair catch around the 29. Punting duties there by Lachlan Edwards, the sophomore from Hastings, Victoria. Come a long way to play some football here at Sam Houston State. Yeah, see, you got the, here's the deal. I, I have no gloves. You got gloves on. Okay. okay. Well, you know, so, you're so still what, wanting to hog the heater here. So you're telling the rest of the crowd on the Southland Conference Television Network who are watching us that I planned ahead and prepared. <laughs> you did do that. Uh, I will admit that. Yeah, Jatavius Wilson there trying to make something happen for Elo. Coming up on the stop, and it'll be a short game, maybe a yard, yard and a half. Now Fielo's had a good several week run here for Sam Houston State, one of the cogs in his defense, second leading tackler for the season. And he's uh, battled some injuries in, during his career. Having a good season this year. When we see the Bearcat defense, Randy, again, bringing pressure. That was Shelby Davis coming out of the, uh, that was Shelby Davis coming off out of that safety spot. You got the gloves. You, yeah. got, you got the gloves. Yep. So you're saying I plan so, I planned ahead. Is what you're saying. So I'm a foot behind you here. <laughs> no, you're we got, more we got, than a foot. We got Abigail here. She's trying to stay warm here. She's, she's we're used to having Randy force. being a little closer to the action. You know but what? no, he's uh, I got I got full view of my monitors <laughs> and the field here. I'm okay. <laughs> and the heater. Just want to make sure you're all right with your gloves and make sure you're taken care of. Plan ahead next time, Michael Boy. <laughs> <laughs> A good stop here by the Bearcat defense on third and about nine yards. Another short gain is all that's allowed. Shelby Davis in on the tackle, and that will force the UCA Bears to punt the ball away. And Randy, right now, from where this game is, you want to see big plays however you can get them. So if you're Sam Houston State, Torrance William averages close to 19 yards of return on punts. Something big. Give your team a spark. Torrance Williams back at the 30 yard line. Jonathan Harrison punting duties for UCA gets that one off. 
Fair well, catch is made. The Bearcats came after the block on that one. Nice yeah. fair catch there by Williams. We'll take a break here. Third quarter at Conway. 12-14 to go in the third. 42-10 Central Arkansas. Hey, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Look. Maybe it's her face. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. Maybe he's really focused. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who do something, the people who take action, are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Central Arkansas leads Sam Houston State 42 to 10, 12, 13 to go in the third quarter. Well, all the votes have been counted so many more than last year. Fans came out in force for the State Farm Southland Conference Mascot Challenge. The winning spirit program gets $5,000. And here is your 2013 champion. Hi, I'm Boyd Taylor, the Lumberjack mascot for Stephen F. Austin. And I just wanted to extend my warm thank you and gratitude for everybody who's voted for me in this mascot challenge. It's been a great opportunity and a huge blessing to serve SFA in such a way. And as always, Axon Jacks. Congratulations to Stephen F. Austin and the Lumberjack. $5,000, the winner of the State Farm Southland Conference mascot challenge. And Randy, I tell you what, Texas A&M Corpus Christi fans came out in force. Izzy the Islander, just a couple of hundred votes shy. What a race to the finish line, and you were pretty high on Izzy, weren't you? No, I was not, actually. I would tell you what, I have always been impressed with the Lumberjack, because when you can curl a cheerleader, and that's your promo, that, that is impressive. you're going to get some votes. That is impressive. You're going to get some votes, and uh, he was kind of like we said over through the course of this particular season, Randy. Last year, Lumberjack was leading, and then Sammy came in and kind of just had a strong close and right. finished with the winner, but... Uh, a little bit of redemption. And they get the, again, the winner gets $5,000, right, to the yeah, program? You bet. Timothy Flanders with the carry. He's knocked out of bounds. Nice play there by Flanders, showing a little bit of speed around the corner. That's after Torrance Williams had picked up about a yard, yard and a half on first down. On second down, Flanders rips off a run for 14. The Bearcat offense trying to go fast. Wide open over the middle. Good yardage there inside the 35. Pass play to Shane Yellen from Brian Bell. One of those quick, easy throws, Randy. For Brian Bell. Look how, look how he gets rid of the ball, and, and Young is right in between defenders. Just a quick release off the line. Brian Bell recognized it. That's good recognition by both he and Young, and Shane Young comes up with a nice grab. First and 10 now for the Bearcats from the 34-yard line. Bell, pass is caught. And Stephen Williams. Well, he's had a pretty good game so far. Yeah, he it? has, Randy. And I'll tell you, this is probably one of the best balls that Brian Bell has been able to throw today. He throws this one on a rope. It's a deep out, which is one of the more difficult passes to, to make. Picks up another first down for the Bearcats. Bearcats charging down here. Another first down and 10 from the 16-yard line. He'll dump it off to Flanders. A couple of nice moves down to close to the 
11, maybe the 10 yard line for Flanders. Right now, let's toss it down to Chris Markowski again. Well, Randy, coming into the game, Timothy Flanders needed 55 yards on the ground to move up to number 10 on the all-time FCS career rushing list. He has passed that mark, so now a top 10 runner all-time in FCS. Man, what a career he has had. You can go on and on about what he has meant to this program and just on a national level for national Timothy level. Flanders. Yeah. And a very deserving Walter Payton Award candidate. Pass is uh, incomplete there. Come on, good Looking defense for Williams. by Marcus Peters, Randy, just staying right in front of Williams. And Peters is one of those bigger, rangier cornerbacks. He's 6'2", 204 pounds, and he's very athletic. We saw on that interception return for a touchdown in the first half, and on that particular play, just he's kind of an imposing figure out there in the defensive secondary. Touchdown Bearcats waiting for that signal. That's Torrance Williams a delayed signal from the official down there They give it to him and the Bearcats strike again here. Well, the officials hat is off the Torrance, but his hands are up Take a look again at Brian Bell Going almost a similar play to what they did before Oh, and how about Williams sticking that left hand, getting the ball across the end line? His body clearly out around the one and a half yard line, right. but he extends the left hand over the end line. This nose breaks the plane. That's a touchdown. Luke Sumberga, point after is up and good for Sam Houston State. A lot of time left here in this football game. 42 17, though. UCA still in control here in Conway. At Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates. We're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. Every down, every day, every team strives to make their dream a reality. The dream NCAA National Champion. And let the party begin. Experience it live at the 2014 NCAA Division I Football Championship Game, Saturday, January 4th at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco, Texas. Affordable tickets available. Visit NCAA.com slash FCS to reserve your seats today. It could be a very big weekend for Central Arkansas. The Sugar Bears volleyball team in the championship tomorrow in Corpus Christi. They'll take on Northwestern State. First serve set for just after 2 o'clock. You can watch that game on ESPN3, Randy. All right, number one seed, Central Arkansas trying to get it done. Luke Swaberga will kick off for Sam Houston State, chipping away at that deficit now 42-17. The lead for Central Arkansas here, third quarter. Dylan Winfrey and Jatavius Wilson. Oh, onside kick. Onside kick. Bearcats, loose ball. Still they think they got loose. it. They're signaling they have the football. We'll A lot find of white jerseys around the ball. You got three or four Bearcats saying it's there. And the official do. says, yes, indeed. Bearcats get the football back. Randy, that's number 18 who came up with it. And that's Luke Swimberga, the kicker. Out of Lindale, Texas. You know anybody from Lindale? No, I've been through Lindale, though. Well, I know I, there's one fairly popular, uh, just kind of popular country singer from there. 
Miranda Lambert. Okay. May have heard of her. I have heard of her. <laughs> you you obviously follow that uh, country music scene, huh? Yeah. Miranda <laughs> Lambert. You might have to break out Hometown, in song here Lindale, before, Texas. Uh, you must know a lot about her. Well, Glenn Fry from the Eagles there is also from there, so. Pass from Bell. That falls well, incomplete, nearly hauled in. Sincere almost made a great grab, Randy, and those are the kind of plays that this Bearcat team is going to have to make. To get back and claw their way back into this game. Well, you know, you, you look at the score right now, and you see how quickly UCA put up points in that first half. Bearcats have that same quick strike kind of offense, and it can get things rolling here if this defense can make stops. Still a lot of football, a lot of time left here tonight. Handoff goes to Flanders. Initial contact there by Blake Childress. That was well read by the front seven of this Bear defense. And that really is one of the hallmarks of the cat last couple of years that we've had the privilege to come here to Conway and or work at Southland Conference game with the UCA Bears playing the front seven. Always very, very difficult to move the ball against, and no different tonight. Blake Jonas comes up with a big play. Third down and nine from the 49 yard line for Sam Houston State. Need a conversion here. Well, there might be some movement. Up. I thought I saw left tackle Donald Jackson move first so Mark, on Sam Houston State. We'll yeah, see if he got Mark Keith Gaines, was he starting it, though? We'll get the call. Now they're going to call it Torch Williams, not the left tackle. And it's slot receiver. You talk about the peripheral vision. Take a look. And it looks like there, Mark Keith Gaines comes first. And that's what Donald Jackson reacts to. But the call was made on the inside receiver. Push it back five now, so third and 14 for Sam Houston State. They need to get all the way to the 42-yard line of UCA. There's Bell over the middle to Williams. Nearly brought it in at the 45. Well, and Brian Bell took a shot, and he's down again and very slow to get up in the official. Recognizing it, he's going to call an injury timeout or an injury. He's going to stop the clock for Brian Bell because he is not able to get up, Randy. Well, you hate to see this, the senior. One of the leaders on the Sam Houston State team, obvious pain. Again, sprained shoulder coming in. He was questionable. Did not start the football game today. Well, and he's given everything he has and just a, a, a valiant effort by Brian Bell. But we know, Randy, part of his, part of what he can really do well is run the ball. And we've not seen him run the ball at all or on extremely limited occasions and not a design run by any stretch. And defensively, the Bears have gotten in and been able to get a couple of licks on him, all legal hits. But just the totality of that, the injury that he suffered last week in Hammond, just uh, trying to gut it out and do something for his team. And hey, senior. It looked like the trainer wanted to take his helmet. He kind of held on. Yeah, to it. he wouldn't let go of it. We may not see Brian Bell rest of the night. You can go on and on about the impact he has had on this program, the back to back runs to a national championship. So now Bearcats will punt it away and you saw the sidelines Jared Johnson warming up so good chance that we will see him on their next offensive possession. Clay Murphy fair catch for UCA. Yeah, if you're Clint Conk and the UCA Bears. It's all about first downs and clock. There's Points are nice, but first downs and clock. There's a shot of Bell right there on the sidelines. Well, he's putting that helmet back on. <laughs> well, uh, you know the word, the, the term gamer, but he certainly is that. He picked up a ball over there on the sidelines, too, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, see if he comes back out or not. Meanwhile, UCA. Willie Matthews Willie with a Matthews. great run on first down. Big hole up the middle. 
Yeah, you saw Bell there still trying to warm up there on that sideline shade. It take a lot to get him out of this football game. Yeah, he's he's a gamer. Will. And off, not much going there. Eric Fiello with the stop. Got a little help from Jesse Boshop as well. Fiello's been in on numerous stops tonight. Second down now, nine. That was a pickup of one as they get it out to the 32 yard line. Pass near the 35 is broken up. Michael Wade on the coverage for Sam Houston State. We've got a UCA player down slowly getting up here. And that's Justin Burdett. Took a pretty big hit there from Michael Wade. Well, we see Michael Wade on special teams making big plays, and that, Brandon, that play was so close to the line of scrimmage. I don't know that Burnett actually had a clear line of sight. Look, he's just maybe four or five yards deep, a little bit behind him. And on a cold night like tonight, when you fall awkwardly, it hurts. Howard dumps it off to Willie Matthews. And not much going there near the 31 yard line. Adebo on the tackle there, Randy, and he read that perfectly. A little screen play, and all the other white jerseys for Sam Houston State were in the face of Ryan Howard. Adebo recognized that it was a screen play, and he runs Willie Matthews down and tackles him by the back of the jersey for a loss of yardage and a fourth down. Now, Bears punting the ball back to Sam Houston State. Torrance Williams around his own 31, 32 yard line should be good field position. Jonathan Harrison gets it off. Pressure there for the Bearcats. And Williams is met around the 39 yard line. So that's where the Bearcats will take over. We'll keep an eye on who comes back in at quarterback. Right now, let's check in again with Chris Mikoski. Randy Brian Bell came to the sideline had a brief conversation with his position coach and a member of the medical staff walked over Looked to the sky and screamed at the top of his lungs before picking up a football making five throws and then getting ready to go about back out for another drive Gutting it out here and there he is number 11 Brian Bell Trying to rally the Bearcats in this football game down 42 17 Pass is caught around the 41 yard line by Richard Sincere. Josh Jones in on the tackle, and that was a nice, sure tackle and keeping Sincere in bounds. Brian Bell rolls out to his right. You had to believe, Randy, right now with the lead that the Bears have, they're content to keep everything in front of them and not give up a big play. Pitch out to Flanders midfield. He'll make it close to the 50 to pick up six, maybe seven yards. And he is just inside UCA territory here. First down for the Bearcats. Coach Clint Cock. Pretty relaxed. Willie Frisch knows what's on the line. Time is not on his side right now, second half. Deep ball for Brian Bell. Too much on that one. He was looking for Richard Sincere downfield around the 10. Pretty good coverage down there. Well, Brian Bell is, a, of course, grew up. His dad was a coach. His brother is a high school coach in the greater Houston area. And all indications are, you know, when well, he's, he's done with his career, coaching. he wants to be a coach. And uh, Fritz thinks he'll be a good one. No, I, there's no question in my mind, just having the opportunity to watch him over the last three years grow up into the quarterback that he is and the player that he is. And we see him as he talks to the team on the sideline and the things that he does. He'll be an outstanding coach. Markeith Gaines comes up with a huge play on second and 10. Ball goes to Flanders, and Flanders loses about four or five yards. Third down and 15 now for Sam Houston State. First down markers all the way at the 39 yard line of UCA. Bell over the middle of the 
Torrance Williams inside the 40. He's got enough for the first down, I think. Just enough. Reach oh, that reach where that marker was. Got a couple extra yards. The chains will move. So a big conversion there for Sam Houston State. Yeah, third and 15. That is the same pass that on the last series bell through. Williams not able to hang on to it. This time he does. And it's a great job of run after catch, and he does just pick up the first down. Bell looking again for Torrance Williams. Incomplete now. 5.39 to go third quarter. And Blake Childress, Randy, not listed as a starter for this Bears defense, but he has had a really good game in coverage, running with those inside receivers, staying with them on the crossing routes, switching off when he needs to switch off. As he's had a pretty good, uh, pretty good game today. Second down and 10 from the 38. There's Flanders. Picks up maybe one or two yards. Yeah, Jonathan Woodard snuffed that play out. That does a good job. Early. The UCA has really eliminated a big play for Flanders today. Only a couple of long runs. About it for number 20. Well, they have, Randy, but keep in mind, Brian Bell not able to run. So whenever you see Flanders and Bell outside the tackle box and are on a zone read, forget about Brian Bell. Yeah. Just go straight to number 20. They're down and nine now from the 37. Bell in the pocket. Pass is caught. That's uh, Torrance Williams again. Stretches out near the 30. He's still going to be about three yards shy. Yeah, they're going to go down. for it. Yeah, on fourth down. Well, you got to at this point. No question about it. See, Torrance Williams is going to stretch out and get as much, many yards as he can. Fourth and about three. Now, pass was intended for Richard Sincere. We see a flag down. Coverage on the play. Darius Reed. Darius Reed. Yeah, they're going to call interference on Reed there on Richard Sincere. Big break for the Bearcats. On a fourth down conversion play, they force it in there to Richard Sincere, but a little too much contact there from Reed. And Bell, plenty of time to throw. Again, looking over the middle. And that's going to be incomplete around the 10 yard line. The Bear Against defenders. Torrance Williams, the intenders. Yeah, the Bear defenders, though, Randy. Rodarius Winston on that on that particular play on the coverage, but from a secondary standpoint, I mean, they're locating receivers and they're running with them extremely well. Good scheme, but late flag that happened behind the line of scrimmage. Nothing that happened downfield, but personal foul call. And that's going to give the Bear Cats. First down from about the 14 yard line. All right, they'll mark it at the 13 yard line. Bearcats knocking on the door here, down 42 17. They need something in the end zone. That'll fall incomplete. Well, here's Brian Bell, Randy, recognizing that he's got man coverage underneath. And that's why you see the routes from the wide receivers, Torrance Williams, Richardson, Sierra, on that particular one. They're not going to the outside and trying to bubble off into a zone where they can be bracketed by a defender. They're running quick routes, short routes, and trying to get those to uh, to kind of get aligned with. So it's a really quick read and quick throw by Bell. It's a pre-snap read that he knows where he's going. Bell looking for the end zone. Oh, nearly a touchdown. Had a receiver there. Falls incomplete. It looked like that might have been Steven Williams. I believe it was Williams. Well, he had the ball his in his hands. He Randy. certainly did. And Brian Bell rolling out to his left, flexing that pocket just a little bit, and Stephen Williams not able to hang on. Third down and ten now. That was a touchdown. It should have been brought in by Sam Houston State. It wasn't. Instead, another third and long here for the Bearcats.
Bell looking for the corner. Sincere. Nope. Did not come down with it. Again, not bad coverage there. Marcus Peters. And you think about the size difference. Marcus Peters is 6'2". Richard Sincere is 5'10". And Bell's trying to throw a ball over the top. Well Just thrown a good ball, job. though. Well no, thrown ball. It, it was well thrown. Sincere had an opportunity, but it was really good defense by Peters to rake the arms through and knock the ball down. Fourth down. Bearcats are going to go for it here. They can still pick up a first down, Randy, if they could get inside the three-yard line. But first things first. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Torrance Williams in the right corner. Coverage on the play by Justin Love. And the Bearcats give it over on downs. UCA gets it back here. Late third quarter in Conway. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out they... Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that could save you hundreds. live at Conway, Arkansas. They're all bundled up. But I'm not sure what the temperature is. I do know it is cold here. Yeah, but they're, checking, that they're checking the Southland app right there. That's, that's what they're doing. Hey, want to tell you about the NCAA Division One selection show, Shay. This is where we're going to find out uh, who gets the nod out of the Southland Conference and where they're headed. 10.30 tomorrow morning on ESPNU. Again, the big selection show. You'll find out all the seedings and all the matchups on the road to a national championship. Well, there really Coming is tomorrow. no question as far as Southeastern is concerned that they're in. It's just going to be seeding, and do they get a bye in the first week? And I would have to say, as well as they have played this year, running the table in the Southland Conference, uh, that that would be my bias on it for sure. Home game? Absolutely. Yeah, they by, the it. By, by the first week, I mean, they should be one of the top four seeds. I mean, they, they've played that well all year. And then, the, then it really comes down to the Sam Houston State team and the McNeese State Cowboys and the, the, the Cowboys again we talked about earlier they've got that tough game in Beaumont tonight against Lamar kicks off at six o'clock about a half an hour or so well I think either way I, I would venture to say McNeese is going to get a bid uh, whether they play at home or the road I, I just I think you're going to get more than one team out of the Southland Conference you know, I agree completely I'm thinking three but you you get into that kind of that esoteric side of when things are going to happen how they're going to go down the selection committee and yeah. the difficulties of that but i mean sam houston state of course they've been pressure there on uh, howard gets it off pass is caught to matthews but good pursuit by the bearcats but you have an expanded field 24 teams right. now and you know, I would love to see that a little bit bigger. I think that's still shortchanging uh, what FCS brings to the table. Well, playoff they, system. They, they, add some more teams to it. it goes. Yeah. I'm with you. You've got three teams in the South and Conference 
currently ranked in the top 10 Bearcats being one of those losing today and just in my personal opinion it'd be a shame to not see them in this playoff tournament pressure gets the kick off tell you what they have come close to blocking several kicks today wow and what, what look at bounce. the roll on this punt Randy that is going to be a punt somewhere on the range of about a 75 <laughs> yards just the perfect bounce and it's there see the punter doesn't get to do that very often and he probably shouldn't be doing it very often based on that effort <laughs> no what an outstanding punt got the roll and i tell you what you said it randy he has been punting and kicking the last three punts that he's had have been under duress because the bearcats very aggressive trying to get a block not able to come up with one yet and it's a nice job getting that ball away and it's even nicer when it rolls another 40 yards for you Right, Bell still out there for Sam Houston. Hands off to Timothy Flanders. He'll cross the 15 yard line. Picks up a couple of yards on the play. Second down and eight now. So we approach the two minute mark, third quarter here at Conway. It has been all Central Arkansas throughout this one. Well, you look at what more on the uh, tournament in the how they do the seedings and all everything that's involved with it. You know, you've got a uh, pass is incomplete there for Bell. You know, you've got a Sam Houston State team that has gone to the national championship each of the last two years. And, and to me, when you go in and you got some teams on the bubble, to me, you give the nod to a team like that that has experience, well, that has tradition. They're, de they're the defending that's top conference tip. champion as well. The first year they went undefeated, and then the, the last year, or last year, excuse me, they, they lost here in Central Arkansas to open the season last year, and then they ran the table. So, again, very deserving and understandably so getting in. I just think, you know, at times selection committees are just a little funky. Things can go a little haywire, and it's always best. And you can ask anybody, any coach, certainly in the Southland Conference, they're going to say they'd much rather win their way in than get voted in. Is that Mulligan comes up with the grab? Yeah, Mulligan made the catch. He took a big hit over the middle, but held on to it. First down for the Bearcats. That'll be Flanders again. We'll see him right there. Goes forward to the 35. So we'll see. 10.30 tomorrow morning. That's when the uh, announcement is made. We'll see how many Southland Conference teams make it. And, of course, one of the premier conferences in the nation. We'll see what kind of respect they get tomorrow. Yeah, ready. I, oh, okay, there you go. Charles Williams took a big shot. We heard it all the way up here, but more importantly for Sam Houston State, Tim Flanders is not doing well. He's kind of limping off the field under his own power, but not feeling good. And you see right there, Torrance Williams, he took a huge shot. That quick pass again, going right in the teeth of the defense. And he just absolutely got leveled by Rodarius Winston. Yeah, we clearly heard it from up here. No doubt about that. Willie Fritz out there with him. And when your head coach gets out there that quickly, you know that they're a little concerned about the hit. And when you see Wart Williams, when he popped up, he looked a little wobbly. He's being helped off here by the training staff. We'll keep an eye on that, get you an update. Yeah, Flanders came out too, hobbling, and he's been battling that foot and ankle injury on and off for the last several weeks. We're all the way down to Ryan Wilson, number four in the running back spot. So no Keyshawn Hill, who has normally come in to spell Tim Flanders. Yeah, first appearance by Ryan Wilson. Pass is caught there. Let's take a look at uh, Stephen Williams with the catch. Let's take a look at that play again that hit across the look. middle on Torrance Williams. And listen. And no sound here, but right in the teeth of the defense, right between three bare defenders, and he just takes a big shot. Again, it's a clean hit by Bradarius Winston. Nothing wrong with that. Good physical play. Nice job of Williams hanging on to that ball. Yeah, Barbell gets out of the pressure, goes deep. Has a receiver and Paul uh, passes nearly caught by Williams inside the five yard lines again. Got his hands on it. Yeah, making sure that, that you know it's Stephen Williams behind the defender. Brian Bell just put a little bit too much on that ball. He rolling out 
avoiding the rush. Pocket integrity broke down, so he's rolling out to his left, and he just tries to throw it back across the body a hair right over the top, and Stephen Williams not able to come down with the grab. Second down and 10 now from the 40-yard line. 28 seconds left here, third quarter. Wilson just to the left of Brian Bell. We'll see what the flag are about to lay a game, I believe, on Sam. Yes, indeed, it was. They'll push it back five now. So some key personnel not on the field for Sam Houston State. Flanders out right now. Torrance Williams. Down in 15. Bell's going to go over the middle. Pass is caught around the 35. Again, good pressure. And catch is made again. Brad Bell, you know, he's got sore shoulder and all. He's gotten it out here. Well, he's stepping up and delivering. That's Molig again who comes up with the grab. Shia Molig. And the Bearcats going quickly, Randy. Touchdown for the Bearcats. That's Molig again. I tell you what, that is his new favorite target here in the second he half. He has Molig made Williams. some big grabs. Going across the middle, taking some shots. Had an opportunity to move the chains and getting back on it quickly. Sneaks down the sideline. Here it is again. Bell gets rid of it quickly. There's Molig right there streaking down that right sideline. Nobody home for UCA. And a Bearcat touchdown here. Late third quarter, three seconds left. Luke Swimbera got point after attempt up and good for the Bearcats. And it's now 42-24 lead for yes. UCA. Sean Olick making himself uh, known here in this game. He said we saw him go across the middle with a couple of good grabs and nice wheels once he gets on the outside and sneaks down the sideline. He's a freshman from Rockwell. Rockwell Heath High School, true freshman, stepping in. He's a 6'2 frame, 183 pounder, and had himself a good ball game today. I can tell you right now, Randy, Willie Fritz is thinking, hey, we're down 16. Well, as quick as, again, I go back to it, as quick as both teams can strike on offense. 18, you, 18 points, sorry. If you get points. a couple yeah, of defensive right. stops and you get to work offensively, they're back in this season. There's no doubt about it, and you got the two-point conversion, of course. This cold weather's... Affecting everything, math skills and all. <laughs> Let's check in now with Chris Mikowski with an update. Chris? Randy Torrance Williams talked to medical staff and appears ready to go back into the game. Was chatting with them, and obviously they are happy with the results of the tests that uh, they gave him. Got his mouthpiece back, and he is in the offensive huddle on the sidelines. All right. Onside kick for the Bearcats. The ball loose ball. Loose Bearcats say they got it. Bearcats say they got it at the 45-yard line. Well, the first, the first Bear defender, Randy, did not cover the ball cleanly. Now, what happens on the bottom of the pile, nobody knows. But it, I guarantee you that was a free ball. Bearcat yeah, football. Let's we'll see who's on the bottom of that pile. That is number 41, Randy. Tyrell Stokes. Coming up with the big play on special teams. Take a look at this again. Swimberga delivered it perfectly. There it is right there. They didn't pounce on it. Free ball. Bearcats, three or four Bearcats right there to jump on it. They knew right away it was going to be their football. Well, Jacoby Walker on the hands team for Central Arkansas. Not able to handle that screwball cleanly. And you saw it was laid up on the tee sideways. Swimberga did a good job of kind of floating it around or propelling it around and let's see what can happen here in the last two seconds of the third quarter. There's Bell. Pass is caught around the 36 yard line. More yardage for Richard Sincere as time expires in the third quarter. All of a sudden a little momentum building now for the Bearcats. They 
got it down to the 32 yard line. Time expires here in the third quarter. Is there a comeback left for Sam Houston State? We're going to find out. Fourth quarter coming up from Conway. Every day, kids witness bullying. They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Silla speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're going to need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change your future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes. You listen. And you listen good. Hey, where's my sandwich? Terry? Take it from me to King DMC. It's a real cool thing to get your GED. Get that diploma! Now hold on and we'll find you three GED classes. Capiche? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. People think I'm trash. But they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can. One day, I could be a stadium. Like live in Conway, Arkansas, Timothy Flanders, who had hobbled off last series, taped up. We'll see if we see him again. They could certainly use him as they try to make a charge here to open the fourth quarter. Up oh, 24 lead for UCA. Yep, Bearcats, Randy. Successful on two onside kicks. Got to convert those to points. Pass is caught. That's a Keyshawn Hill from Brian Bell. Block will stop. And a second down coming up now for Sam Houston State. So we talk about some quick strikes. Can they get back into this thing? It's going to come down and can they make defensive stops? Well, it will, but they're also, Randy, going to have to score a little bit more quickly, be a little bit more efficient. Can't eat up a lot of time while you're trying to put points on the board. Bell looking downfield for his tight end. No, but nothing home for Shane Young. Bell will get out of bounds, scrambling. Avoided the contact, which is important, around the 12 or 13 yard line. Well, very alertly, Brian Bell recognized as that the these defenders for Central Arkansas are sticking with their receivers, knowing that he is not a very likely candidate to run. However, once he eluded the pressure and broke containment, there was a lot of turf in front of him. Take a look here. He wants to throw the ball, wants to throw the ball, but there's so much grass in front, he's able to pick up the first down. First and 10 now from the 13 yard line for the Bearcats. There's Bell looking for the end zone. He's got his man. That's a touchdown. Steven, Steven Williams. Williams for the Bearcats. 13 yard scoring strike. Brian Bell to Williams. And don't count the Bearcats out yet. Well, we saw Steven Williams Randy earlier in the game. Miss a touchdown. Brian Bell getting a little bit more mobile, and I think that's helping this Bearcats offense as he's rolling out. Again, no threat to run, but as he rolls out, I think it does put a little bit more pressure on that defense and opens up a little bit more seams for those receivers. 42-31 now. We can update that. Point after is good. It's an 11-point lead now. For UCA after the touchdown with 13 yards from Brian Bell to Stephen Williams. Wow, what a second half so far. A lot more still ahead. Our Justin's classroom champions. Let's talk about that. Don King the third, freshman quarterback for Sam Houston State. Great GPA, kinesiology major, Dean's List student. Really involved with community service around the Huntsville area. So congratulations to Don King. Matt Hornbuckle. 
defensive tackle, already a graduate of Central Arkansas, completed his degree in May, currently pursuing a Master's of Business Administration, and of course, big impact on this Bears football program as well, so getting it done in and out of the classroom. Matt Hornbuckle of Central Arkansas. Congratulations, our Justin's classroom champions. There are the Bearcats on the sidelines. They have been busy scoring quickly to get back into this football game, and there is a lot left here in Conway. Bearcat, or Bears will bring it out. Dylan Winfrey for UCA. We know, Randy, too, you talk about those classroom champions, and the Bears have led the Southland Conference in academic progress for the third straight year. And it's something that Clint Conk has talked about and, and really the experience of a student athlete here in Conway. And you feel the support from not only Coach Conk, but the athletic department, right. you know, all the people that are around uh, this campus. And it's a, you know, it's truly the student athlete, and it's a, it's something he's very proud of. And Matt Harmbuckle representing this week as the Jostens classroom champion. Got a flag down right now. Officials talking it over. Let's listen in here. Well, Randy, right now you cannot afford. Oh, Mo, Minum has changed jerseys. Central Arkansas could do no wrong in the first half. Now in the second half, the Sam Houston State Bearcat team has come storming back, and these types of penalties, these dead, these dead ball penalties, are just backbreakers. Coach Clint Clark looking on, and tell you what, when you look at Sam Houston State, do they ever need a defensive stand? It's now. They cannot afford anything here in the fourth quarter. A little bit of the wildcat look. From the Bearcats, it's Jacoby Walker in the Wildcat, Randy. And Jacoby Walker was on the, the guy who was kind of not able to field that onside kick, listed as a wide receiver on this team. He's a product for the greater Houston area, transferred in from the University of Arkansas. His first appearance today, nothing going there. Bearcats read that perfectly. And Ryan Howard now checking back in the game. But as you said, the Bearcat defense. That was Shelby Davis with the stop. You got a third down and four now coming up for UCA. Now keep in mind when you say Shelby Davis making the stop, and it's at the line of scrimmage. Shelby Davis is a defensive right. back. So this is a sellout effort right now by this Bearcats defense trying to force, if not a, a turnover, at least a three and out. Right now it's third and about four and a half yards to go for the first down. Pressure on Howard. He gets loose, and he has enough, I he believe, wrangled, for the first down. Wow. He wrangled his way. Four white jerseys, Randy, on Ryan Howard. And he continues to twist. Spins out. Take a look here. He's going to get hit. First initial contact. That's short of the first down. He continues to move forward, though, and picks up a very important first down. For the Bears from the 25 yard line new set of downs pressure again on Howard he gets away slides to the 32 maybe the 33 yard line and that'll be a pickup of seven maybe eight yards a big gain there on first down for UCA well Ryan Howard checking out Jacoby Walker checking back in as Chris reported Taylor Reed out with the concussion so no rotating of quarterbacks Jacoby Walker Getting the alternate snaps that Ryan Howard's not getting. Oh, he met a bunch of Bearcat defenders at the line of scrimmage. That's going to be a loss of one on that carry by Jacoby Walker. Played his high school ball at Spring Westfield High School. Big recruit coming out of the Houston area. Oh, yeah. Corby Meekins, head coach there. Right. Originally signed with the University of Arkansas, but has transferred into this program. Third and five now. After that loss of one. Ryan Howard back in there for UCA. Bearcats, his defense trying to make a stop. Howard's pass is caught at the 42-yard line. What a catch there by Blake Gardner. Went you down and got it. Randy, that is a hands catch. Blake Gardner not used much. Take a look at this snag. 
Wow. That is outstanding job of going down, using those hands, securing the ball, runs a great route and makes an even better catch. Talk about a big play when your team needs it. That was a missed tackle in the backfield on Matthews. He got away, winds up picking up a couple of yards. Siona Latu had him in the backfield, couldn't bring him down here. Well, Siona Latu, only a freshman, Randy, out of Ulysses High School. He's one of the guys that has had to fill in for Gary Lawrence. Gary Lawrence is just an absolute terror in the middle of this defense, but he was lost earlier in the season with a torn ACL. So Latu, the freshman, getting some playing time. Pressure on Howard, and he gets it away just in time. Bearcats bringing the heat. That didn't take long at all. They were on him. Clock stops now. 10.33 to go to the fourth. Well, that is one of the luxuries is Mike Collins that you can have as defensive coordinator again for this Bearcat defense, Randy. When you've got good lockdown corners, then you can bring more pressure. Problems, Ben, is that Buki Sneed is the only returning starter in that defensive secondary, so not many looks his way. But Michael Wade, Desmond Fight, DeAndre Locke, Shelby Davis, all those other defensive backs. You gotta grow up and learn how to play that man coverage a little better. Third down and eight. UCA trying to get a third down conversion for the third time on this drive, and they get it. And then some. All the way down to the Bearcats 42 yard line. Pass is caught by Courtney Whitehead. And I almost called him Dominique Crooms. Remember Dominique yep. Crooms? Oh, yeah. Big play receiver here at UCA. Nice job there on third down. I'm telling you, man, those are backbreakers for a defense, Randy. And this Bear offense doing absolutely what it needed to do to get that momentum rested back away from the Bearcats and a good long drive here. See if they can go down and put some points on the board. There's Howard. There he's going to be brought down. Yeah, Latu. That's Latu. Makes up for that missed tackle a few plays ago. The freshman with the big sack of Ryan Howard. Well, Ryan Howard trying to extend the play and stay alive. Take a look. And he's hard to bring down, Howard. He's going to take another. He's very elusive. But once he gets away from Beauchamp, he runs right into Latu. And no way he could avoid that. That's second in a mile. Yeah, that's a loss of nearly what 15 yards. 14, yeah, yeah. second 24. Push it all the way back to the 44 yard line. Bearcats need to stop Matthews with the carry up the middle. He's got running room inside the 45, back to the original line of scrimmage, close to it at least. Wow, Willie Matthews. And this has been running back by committee for the Bears this year, Randy. They've not had a really what you would call a dominant front line runner. Willie Matthews getting a lot of the carries, but Danzel Williams, Blake Beasley, both those guys have contributed. That was a big run right there on second down, picking up 14 yards. Hey, it's third and 10, but at least you gained 14 yards of field position. And that's assuming that you don't. Uh -oh. Got a late substitution here now. It looks like. Number 64 checking in. That's they're gonna need to call Brian a timeout Manley. Here. Yeah, I don't know that they're gonna have time to get the yeah. playoff. Yeah, they're gonna call a timeout. UCA will. That's their first of the second half. They got two remaining. Bearcats have all three left. But again, this is gonna be a, another critical third down conversion attempt. They've already had three conversions on this drive. We'll take a break with them. 8:30 to go here, fourth quarter. We'll see what happens down the stretch here at Conway. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Of this guy. Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to contact your local State Farm agent.
at Mid-South Bank, we're dedicated to providing loans that allow our customers to achieve their business and personal dreams. That's one promise you can bank on. We're not just business associates, we're neighbors. We're committed to our customers and the strength of our local economy. Here at Mid-South Bank, responsibility matters. With over 61 locations and still growing in Louisiana and Texas, discover how our customers are finding strength in numbers at Mid-South Bank. All right, a chilly day here at Conway. Shout out to the crew. Good yes, job, man. crew. Good Yeoman. job, guys. Yeoman like work. Yeah, we got this heater right here. They, they don't have a heater up there. Uh, well, you know what? I they don't know, why, I don't you know why you keep saying we have this heater. Well, you're the one sitting down propping your feet up We have here. this heater? <laughs> I can't get you out of the way of the heater. Third down and 11. Howard feeling the pressure. Got it off now to Matthews. Now well, the Bearcats sideline is saying, listen, we had him. We had our arms wrapped around him. That should have been a sack. Should have been, but it wasn't. He got the ball out, flicks it out to Willie Matthews. But great pressure. Latu again is the one chasing him out, forces him into the arms. And look, that's, yeah, that's a good play yeah, right there. Yeah, not quite down yet. Michael Wade comes up with the, with the tackle, but. Still a stop. Good, Defensive stop here. Yep. Jonathan Harrison, who's had a great day punting the football. He sure has. Punt away here. I believe that's Torch Williams around the 12 yard line. Yep, it is. And you know what? Just punt this ball away from Williams. You got a lot of grass on the right hand side. You're over on the left hash mark. Delay oh, they're going to back him up a yeah. little bit. You know, probably they're like fine that. with that. Oh, well, yeah, that last kick, we got a great bounce. What was a close to a 70-yard punt? Yeah, and you see Harrison coming over to the sideline. Coach Clint Conk making sure he's clear on what he wants to do. And if I'm Coach Conk, I'm saying, listen, you got a lot of grass on the right. Land the ball somewhere around the 20-yard line, inside the 20, and have it roll. And if we can down it before it goes in, that'd be great. Just don't give Williams a chance to return this. Harrison will punt it away. Well, well I think hit, it hit, hit a bear cat. It hit Torrance Williams. Randy. I believe it did. And UCA is going to recover the football. Justin Love. Honestly, take a look at Williams. He's waving people like a fair catch. And then he decides, that, oh, no, it's not, Randy. It hits number 30 in the back. That's Sammy Webb. Sammy Webb just trying to make a play and fortunately it hits him on the back and a big break for UCA. And, and, and if you're Torrance Williams right now, I mean, oh, the, what, oh, oh, the fans here in Conway are not happy at all. I'm not sure they're, what the officials are meeting about. The ball did bounce again. You'll see it bounce off the back of Samuel. And as the punt returner, if you're Torrance Williams right now, Randy, you have to be yelling. You to have get out to be way. yelling. To get out top of, the way. of your lungs and making sure that your guys that are blocking know that the ball's coming down and, and to just avert, get out of the way. First and 10 now for UCA. Jacoby Walker back there for the Bears. Went after that 14 yard line here. defense did what they needed to do force the punt. But unfortunately for Sam Houston State ball bounces off the shoulders of Webb and the Bears are back on offense. Jeremy Walker picks up a couple of yards on that keeper and Ryan Howard will check back in for UCA. Let's check in with Chris Mikowski. Chris. Randy, I was standing with the Sam Houston State offense as they were preparing to enter the field. And after the ball went uh, the direction of UCA, no yelling, no screaming, just heads down and walked back to the bench. Brian Bell, the only one really protesting and uh, getting a little angry with that uh, play right there. There's Howard. Pass is caught inside the five yard line. Oh, what a nifty grab. He almost twisted all the way around to make that catch. Yeah. And that's uh, that's, that's Desmond, Desmond Lewis. Lewis, formerly number five, now number 89. Yeah, well, take a look at this. He goes look at way that behind the body, puts the brakes on, catches the ball with his hands, and then gets additional yards after catch. 
Bears are now on the two yard line. I'm guessing Chase Dixon would approve. Handoff over the top. Nothing there. Well, About maybe a yard. That was uh, Willie Matthews kind of flipped <laughs> over there, held onto the football. Got a Superman. Take a look. He's going to get the leap here. Diving, trying to get in. He goes airborne. He gets hit around the thighs. And have you ever heard the call? He jack he jackknife twists, catapults his way into the end zone. <laughs> that was kind of what it would look like, didn't it? Mm-hmm. You know who said that? One Kern Tips. Oh yeah. The voice of the Southwest Conference and the Humble Old Radio Network back in the old days, back when everything was on radio. Touchdown, Willie Matthews and Central Arkansas takes advantage. And they punch it in for the touchdown. Well, yeah, you can see not necessarily tempers flaring, but just more of a statement. Dominique Allen, 6'3", 295 pounds. Getting a good block there, opening up that crease for Willie Matthews. And Willie scored on the ground, and he got his first touchdown reception earlier in the first half of this game. One after is up and good by Eddie Camara. So a tough break for Sam Houston State. Central Arkansas takes advantage. They increase their lead to 49 31 here in the fourth at Conway. I'm one unlucky guy. The chance of being involved in a robbery is one in 757. The chances of being struck by lightning. One in 750,000. Please fasten your seatbelts for unexpected turbulence. The chances of being a victim in an airline crash? One in 29 million. Hey, could I get some peanuts? The chances of being involved in a car crash are far greater than lightning strikes and plane crashes. And if you are texting while driving, your risk of crash increases 23 times. Now, I may be an unlucky guy, but I don't have to be part of that statistic, and neither do you. Drive responsibly. Wow, these are really good. You like surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. A look at the scoreboard around the Southland Conference against Southeastern Louisiana, finishing up a perfect Southland campaign on Thursday night. And in the battle for Chief Caddo, Northwestern State reclaims the biggest trophy in college sports, 40 to 27, the win over Stephen F. Austin. McNeese and Lamar just getting started in Beaumont on ESPN3, Randy. Hey, Chris. Yes, sir. How, how about helping us out? How big is that trophy? How big is Chief Caddo? I need to do a little more research. I can't tell you off the top of my head, but man, he is huge. It, it's seven and change, <laughs> if I remember correctly. A, that is seven, seven, six, six, seven, six, three bills, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay warm down there, Chris. Stay warm down there. I'm trying. You guys are divas. You got some cover. <laughs> I, I'm out in the elements. You I, guys have a heater. Come I, on. Can, I can tell you, I'm getting none of the heat because Shay is hogging wow. this thing. You know what? I, I tell you, Chris, you know better than that. Poor Abigail. She can't get any of the heat either, man. We're, we're, she, you're taking all of it. You're propping up during the commercial breaks. And the camera doesn't lie, man. <laughs> all right, now, Randy Bearcats can ill afford anything other than big plays at this point in the game. Richard Sincere brings it out for Sam Houston State. And they will get it back here, 5.32 to go in the ball game. Well, now you start thinking as these final minutes wind down here, Bearcats not giving up yet, but 
You look at all the seniors on this football team that have just made a remarkable run the last couple of years. Well, it's been incredible. Willie Fritz in his fourth year and, and just doing the job that he has done. It's just been nothing short. Brian Bell's going to have to use a timeout. He's looking for it, but he doesn't. Well, 10, 10 seconds now on the play yeah, clock. Time. He walked back to the official like he was going to use a timeout and decided not to. Bell over the middle. Pass is caught. Guess who? Number 80 again. Yeah, but just, Justin Hurd there on the tackle. And again, Randy, you see the safeties for Central Arkansas playing way off the line of scrimmage. Second down and six now for the Bearcats. Pressure coming off Bell. He gets away. Tries to get out of bounds. Boys in contact. Clock will stop. And he's fighting for every inch is Brian Bell. He goes and holds the ball with his right hand trying to get extra yards, which is a little counterintuitive because you're going off on the left sideline. But yeah. Fighting for every inch he can get. And he is, does get enough to pick up the first down. Clock rolling again inside five minutes to go. First and ten now, 43-yard line. There's Bell. He looking downfield. Wants Gerald Thomas. Yeah, the Marcus pass Peters is there. Is it is uh, intercepted by Peters? A little too much in that football. He wanted his receiver Gerald Thomas to break down. He did, but too much on it. And Peters was right there. His second interception of the game. Well, the first he returned for a touchdown late in the first half. The second one is one that is going to deny the Bearcats their ongoing or their current possession. And Brian Bell just trying to make a play, having somebody go up and make a play, and that's what it would take to get back in this game. Four minutes, 38 seconds on the clock. Central Arkansas, I'm going to say with a comfortable, if you can call that, Clint Donk wouldn't call. The same yeah, movement here. Bearcats do have three timeouts left. I imagine they'll use them at some point. Willie Matthews, he's had a good ball game here. The backfield for Central Arkansas. You know, Ryan Howard, Randy, when he came in for Winrick Smothers after Smothers' season ending injury, goes in against Lamar, and he led this Bears team on a, on a 12 play, 75 yard drive. And go ahead score late in the fourth quarter and that was kind of his uh, coming out party if you will and ever since that time he's been doing a great job for the bears yeah, a lot of john going down there between uh, willie matthews and shelby davis that's been going on for a couple of series now between those two yeah, it has but if you're willie matthews you've got to keep your cool because here's the thing you're leading by 18 points you don't need to jawbone with anybody just point to the scoreboard. Yep. 49 31 lead. That's all they need to say today. We approach the and three minute mark. And more importantly than that, don't put your team in a bad spot by getting a penalty after the play. Third and four passes tips nearly intercepted. That was close. Nearly intercepted by Jared Brown of Sam Houston State. Falls to the ground. Fourth down now for Central Arkansas. Maybe in Forbes Baggett. Who got his hands on that ball? He's one of the seniors here at Sam Houston State, along with Andrew Weaver. Also, Jared Brown. We're going to see some new faces on this D line next year for Sam Houston State. Yep. Well, Jonathan Harrison needs to get this ball away. Great punt by Harrison. Excellent hang time. Oh, yeah, it's flag draw, is down. Right? He, he wasn't given the chance to even catch the ball, so it'll be against Central Arkansas. Yeah, to give him enough space to make the uh, catch, and that did not occur. So it'll be a penalty against Central Arkansas as Sam Houston State gets the ball back on offense here. What did they used to call that bubble around the punt returner? The, the something zone or landing zone or I don't know what it's called, but it's you got to give him space. No, you can't be, yeah. yeah, no, it's there was no room at all. Contact was made down there, and they'll 
mark it off for the Bearcats. Well, I remember, I remember when there was line. a period. Throwing out. deep. Pass is caught downfield. Wow, what a Lock great on the day coverage. Damian Watts has had downfield on the deep ball. And you're thinking that this Bears team is going to be content to run off the last three minutes of the clock. Nothing doing. Ryan Howard dropping back and heaves a bomb. And Damian Watts comes up with another huge catch. Defenders are there hanging on to his left arm. He still comes up with the grab. The Atre lock on the coverage, beating on that play. Watts with the catch. First and 10 now for the 23 yard line. Matthews up the middle. He'll pick up four, maybe five yards. Well, my first question is, you know, I was a little surprised they're throwing the football. You know, you got the big lead, two minutes, you know, just under three minutes to go, and pretty much have wrapped this one up. They decided to go deep and well executed play. Bearcats will take a timeout here. Well, Bearcats running out of time here at Conway. They came in on the season eight and three, four and two in conference play. They opened with that big win, Shea, over Houston Baptist, future Southland Conference opponent. Had a trip uh, to Texas A&M and to Kyle Field, but the big win. Eastern Washington yeah. at home. I, I had a chance to call that game. Uh, impressive win for this team early in the and year. And Eastern Washington was ranked number two in the country at that time. Right. And they look at that loss there at McNeese, Randy, and really for this uh, for this team, understanding what a conference loss meant. They run the table again until last week until they go to North to Southeastern, excuse me. And then now today, here in Conway to finish out the season. Chris, your thoughts? Uh, on the Bearcats and for this matter for Central Arkansas as well. They'll finish with a seven win season here. Well, Randy, I wanted to talk about that Sam Houston State resume as they look to impress the selection committee as they make their choices for the bracket. You look at those two games against non counters Houston Baptist and UIW. Those really weren't by choice when Sam Houston State gets this good. They've been to two straight national championship games. No other FCS team will play them. Houston Baptist that game was scheduled only really as an act of desperation. They needed another home game. They needed to play and they could not get anybody in the country at the FCS level to come play them. So it's really not completely Sam Houston State's fault. They don't have another an extra win on that resume that counts on that division one record. Well, hopefully that will be something that is taken into account when the selection committee sits down to review all the choices. Well, that said, you, you see those two games and then those making the decisions are going to see the outcome and kind of what went down here in Conway and it could hurt him again. Howard looking for the end zone and that's going to fall incomplete. Yeah, taking shots here late in the game. That was Desmond Lewis, the intended receiver. Third down now coming up. Still, still trying to figure out why they're throwing the football, but I guess we'll get an answer after the game, perhaps. Up by 18 points here. Two, just over two minutes left. Well in control. That's Wilson. He'll get the football, tries to turn the corner. And yeah, the ball's loose, Randy, but the whistle had blown. That's on the fourth down, so it will go back over to the Bearcats. Coach Fritz telling the defense just to calm down a little bit. Two oh seven to go fourth quarter. A lot of emotions there on the Bearcats sideline and for that matter for UCA. These guys leave it all on the field, both teams. A lot of pride on the line. They've had some good battles last few years, these two teams. Well, they have, and, and right now you know, the series stands Central Arkansas four, Sam Houston State three. Bears looking to push that to five and three. So very competitive series between these teams every time they play. And there's Timothy Flanders. 
He'll pick up about three yards to add to his career total. As his career is winding down here in Conway today. The 31 Sam Houston State records. Nine Southland Conference records. Two-time player of the year. I'd say he's had a pretty good career in Huntsville. Yeah, he has left his mark. Peter's almost intercepted for Third down play coming up for the Bearcats. Third and six now. We minute 42 to go fourth quarter. Pass is caught from Bell. I believe that's Torrance Williams. Don't know if he's going to have enough for the first down, though, Randy. They got pushed Full, back. Yeah, forward progress. Oh, yeah. Still, it's going to be right at the 28-yard line. I think he needs to get to the 29 for a first. Yeah, they're about a yard short, maybe a little bit more. Fourth down now. One timeout left for the Bearcats. It'll be Flanders. Flanders has enough. Crosses the 30-yard line. First down for Sam Houston. There's Bell over the middle. Flag is going to be down. Tended receiver was Torrance Williams. Interference call looks like coming up against Central Arkansas. Yeah, Justin Hurd was on. Flagged for that. A little contact there with Torrance Williams. So they get it out to the 39, first and 10 now. And again, looking for Williams. Nothing there for yeah. Sam Houston. Trying to. Yep. Richardson Sears is senior. So next year, when you look at this receiving core for the Bearcats, you're going to be counting on guys like Chance Nelson, maybe a Gerald Thomas. Well, another big hit from Bobby Watkins. But I tell you what, you see the hit? I'm going to tell you what a great catch that was for Sincere to hang on to that ball, knowing he's going to take a direct shot. Well, he's completely exposed, and he comes up with a huge catch. Well, nearly intercepted again. Pass was in a yeah, Marvin Mitchell, right the 35 yard line. Three interceptions on the year. And that's just Brian Bell being a little sneaky, a little crafty, trying to get it over the head of Marvin Mitchell. And the sophomore, excuse me, the junior, turns around. Locates the ball, almost comes up with a pick. The entire offensive line for Sam Houston State starting offensive line returns next year. I didn't mention in the receiving core, the young man who really had a great game today, Motlev, uh, number 80, who's made some fantastic Sean catches. Motlev, yep. He's going to be a guy they count on as well. He's a freshman. You, know, you think about some of the guys that have rolled off of this Sam Houston State team and role players like Trey Diller, who was a punt returner and also a very talented inside receiver and right. kind of some of the transitions that have happened and, you know, graduation, you're going to lose guys. But to make back to back national championship appearances, that means you're doing a whole lot of things right. It's a lot of football over a couple of year period. Third and 10 now for the 48 yard line. Bell again. That pass is caught. It's Gerald Thomas. And that's enough for a first down. Yes. Inside the third. I like that nice combination route is Gerald Thomas and Torrance Williams. The defenders went toward Williams. And that's where the ball had been going most of the time. Gerald Thomas comes up with a nice grab. 13 seconds left. Bell looking for the end zone. Nearly brought in there. Yeah, Some Bobby, contact made yeah, by Bobby again. Watkins brought that, broke that up. Coming off that safety position. Man, anytime you put that much air underneath the ball and you've got a high safety, that's exactly the amount of time that he needs to get to the sidelines and break the play up, and Bobby Watkins did it perfectly. Well, the intensity hasn't left the Bearcats, even though we're down to five seconds. Ryan Bell and company. There's going to be a timeout called here.
Well, this will be an opportunity for Coach Conk to pull all the seniors off. Our Coach Willie Fritz, tough loss today. They'll wait the verdict tomorrow when the bids are handed out. You know, Randy, this Bearcat team has been ranked in the top 10 for 32 consecutive weeks. Pretty impressive. It really is. Well, they've been, we talked to Bobby Williams, the athletics director at halftime, just on what, what's it, what it meant to hear the last couple of years to make these national title runs and, you know, the national TV experience, just getting the, the name out there, the branding of Sam Houston State football. It's helped tremendously with school enrollment, with recruiting, and uh, they've made some inroads over the last several years. Final seconds here of the ball game in Conway. Second down play for the Bearcats. This might be it here. Passes intended for Richard Sincere. There's still .9 left on the scoreboard clock. Well, Brian Bell trying to throw a dart instead of the, the jump ball pass. Tried to find Sincere, but too many purple jerseys around. There's three guys right. We get a look at the back. If you can go pan right on the camera, take a look at all the Bear defenders and where they're standing. Yeah, you got seven of them back there. You got to get Chris Mikowski back there. <laughs> Actually, you got eight of them back there. You got three on yeah. the line. Yeah. <laughs> here we go. All right, guys. Point they... nine left. This is going to do it here. Final play of the game here in Conway. Well, an improvisational shovel pass and tried to flip it back to Brian Bell. Just anything to pick up positive yards, but nothing doing. Good game by the University of Central Arkansas Bears. That's going to do it. 49 31 the final. We'll wrap it up for Conway when we come back. In the NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision, the game is played with perseverance, integrity, passion, character, and sportsmanship as he works to honor the game and respect his teammates, opponents, officials, and fans. Every FCS player grows in his responsibilities as a student athlete and as a member of his campus and community. The NCAA Division I Football Championship Subdivision. Every down, every day. Are you sure we should take this billboard down? People find out State Farm does car loans as well as they do insurance. Our bank is through. Good point. Grab an edge. Look, there's two guys on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. No, for real, there's two dudes on the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Gentlemen, please get down from the State Farm Borrow Better Banking sign. Bill, get the hose. Okay, he's getting the hose. All right, let's go. Want to borrow better? Contact your local State Farm agent about a car loan that can save you hundreds. All right, welcome back. Our Southland Strong player of the game here at Conway, Desmond Lewis. Changing jerseys for the game, Randy. Yeah. Wearing number 89, Chase Dixon's number. The all-everything tight end, but, man, he contributed early and often. Desmond Lewis, huge game. Going out strong today and victory here in Conway on senior day for Central Arkansas. Right now, let's toss it down the field. Chris Mikoski standing by with Clinton Cox. Chris. Randy, thank you. And coach, senior day, a win over a top 10 team. While you'd love to be going to the playoffs, this is still a pretty, pretty special way to end the season. Well, we wanted to, you know, leave nothing in the tank. Um, didn't play very sharp uh, for the most part of the third quarter. Uh, we won the turnover battle. Uh, that was going to be very, very important tonight. I thought we did a great job against the run, and we contained their offense and uh, obviously got off to a a fast start, which we, uh, you know, were able to kind of cruise in the second half there. But uh, nice win against the top 10 team, a little bittersweet. Uh, certainly our expectations here at the university are a little bit higher than 7-5. and five. Uh, But given the situation um, with the injuries and the key personnel that we, you know, didn't have for this game, but for about half the year, 
uh, pretty rewarding. Coach, I appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you. Randy, Shay, back to you. All right, Chris, good job down there. Appreciate it. Central Arkansas on senior day. Knocks off Sam Houston State 49-31. Reminder, the volleyball championship's coming up tomorrow. Been a fun year on the South of Conference Television Network for the entire crew. Thanks for watching, and so long from Conway, Arkansas. The Bears beating the Bearcats 49-31 the final. On Thursday night.